Fantastic. Okay, welcome everybody. This is the June 27th community board 1 full board meeting. I'm Tammy Meltzer chair. I'm joined by Alice blank, our vice chair and Mimi Flynn, our secretary tonight and the full board. So we appreciate we are at quorum. So we're going to start with the public session. Um, the public session, Mimi will be timing people and everyone has 2 minutes to speak. Um, and we will call people by topic. Lucy, did you send me the links? I'm just double checking before I go. Oh, okay, uh, Luce, did you send me the links? Yeah, no, no. So give me a second so I can take a look. Books and desk. Yeah. Oh, you see that was Thank you. Thanks, Liz. You sent it again? Got it. Okay. All righty. Okay, so uh, we are going to call in the following order for right now Avery Bakirden and then Darlene Lutz. And let me just confirm if Avery is online. We see Avery. Avery not being in the room, I'm looking online. Avery, if you are online with us, please raise your hand so you can be called. Darlene, are you in the room? Darlene Lutz. That's okay. Darlene, you can unmute yourself. Um, hello, thank you. It's Darlene Lutz from uh, up north. Uh, I am a resident of Community Board Two. I'm. Uh, I signed up to uh, quickly speak. Uh, I saw an, the item on the agenda tonight. Thank you, Community Board One, for keeping the issue of uh, the piece of legislation on open dining on the radar. Uh, um, as most of you know, uh, the city council has failed to hold any public hearings on open dining. Uh, the, and we know the legislation was created behind closed doors with the hospitality lobbyists, the bids and their patrons. Um, I just wanted to give, uh, basically a prop to CB1 for, uh, even, you know, hearing this, uh, uh, hearing from the public that, uh, this is. You know, devastating lower Manhattan and impeding our recovery uh, from uh, the pandemic and hope springs eternal. So, uh, thank you for hearing me. Uh, and um, everybody knows where to reach me. Uh, I'd be happy to, uh, you know, work on any initiatives that anyone might take. Thank you and good evening. Thank you so much. We're going back to the 1st uh, person. Let's see if we can find Avery. Avery, I see I've asked Avery, you can unmute yourself. Difficulty uh, raising me. No, nope, um, you're here. All right. Awesome. Uh, so I just wanted to speak, um, again, I believe I, I spoke with, uh, just the executive board about, um, 111 Washington street, um, uh, previously, but, uh, I just wanted to speak again about the construction that is going on at, uh, 109 Washington street at the Brownfield site, the cleanup. Um, 
specifically to talk about the fact that the construction is still going on today and it is um, creating like serious exceedances. Uh, and so there are, there are residents there that have their own air monitors. Um, and these air monitors are up to EPA standard. They are, they're recommended by the EPA through the EPA website and they are registering at unhealthy levels right now. Um, and they are, it, it's not unhealthy for sensitive groups. It's all the way up to unhealthy, which is incredibly dangerous for residents that have that already have issues, um, due to the fact that many of them are 911 survivors. And again, I just like to bring this issue uh, to the forefront just because as Mayor Eric Adams just tweeted a few hours ago, uh, the winds tonight from the Canadian wildfires are going to be bringing in more smoke later this evening and uh, tomorrow air quality is going to be worsening in the city. For those, for those of you that are not aware, I recommend that you wear a KN95 or an N95 mask outside if you have to go outside tomorrow. Um, but this air quality uh, reduction that the entire city is going to be experiencing tomorrow. When we are experiencing that, I ask that everybody remember that uh, the, that air quality level is uh, comparable to what the residents at 111 Washington Street are experiencing on a regular basis due to this construction. Um, again, they've had multiple uh, violations. They've had a citation issued through the DEP. Um, they have an open oath citation. And um, they still have not paid that fine. That's a $5,000 fine for a class one hazardous violation. Um, and they, they were spotted not uh, maintaining and not properly taking care of the dust at that time. And uh, this, is, this is a very serious issue that I, I think needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Sorry, I'm looking at the screen. It's okay. <laughs> Joel, I sent you a request to unmute. You are now unmuted. Um, Joel Kupperman, and I Mental Justice Initiative. Um, Avery is one of my good interns, and I want to reiterate what he said. And also, I just want to remind Community Board One that it was DEC that told us that the air was safe downtown. Um, due to DEC air monitoring reports. I've been involved with this with 9-11 area since 9-11, and it is red flag are up again. We've reviewed all the plans for this site. There are definitely high levels of VOCs, SVOCs, and that stuff is becoming uncovered. Um, and part of the problem is that the monitor that they're using, or plan to use, is PM10, which is um, just the large particles. PM2.5 is what's causing the damage. And this monitor that we have is what Esther is using, is EPA recognized. But moreover, with a, the most alarming is that on Wednesday, that fateful Wednesday day, they continue to um, work. They let the workers not wear their masks. And this is the one area where the city and the state in control particulate matter, and they didn't. So I believe that um, there should be a lot more controls and pressure that's applied there. And also we want to point out that the DEP monitor that was sent there that issued the, 5, 000, uh, the fine for, for the particulate matter wasn't even aware that it's a Brownsfield site. So we have a problem again of New York City DEP, DOH, and the DEC failing us and basically telling us that the air is clean and it's not. The construction that's happening there also is affecting the structure of the building. And also we have a problem of vapor intrusion. We have 
VOCs and SVOCs that um, tend to congregate underneath the buildings. They're not testing 109. And all that construction is site is actually causing those, those chemicals to volatilize and go up into the building at 109 and other buildings. Yet they refuse to um, institute air on, um, vapor intrusion monitoring. So I believe the community board should ask for cessation of these construction activities until much more strong institutional controls are in. And also I think it's important to point out that the fine doesn't even go anywhere besides it doesn't stop the bad construction. The city is owed $2 billion in uncollected fines. So it's not even a speed bump that these fines are being instituted. The Department of Environmental Protection told us that they did get into a fine because there was visible um, dust and the water wasn't hooked up. They hooked up the water a little while later, and that does not necessarily suppress. It doesn't necessarily. Sorry, Joel. Uh, we, you were heard, um, and uh, we'll let you go a little bit over, but we do have a long, robust agenda, and there are others, and we will try and get back to you with council member's office on the next steps. Alrighty. I need to do a sound check because we're having some audio issues. Go for it. Thank you. Audio. Okay. Lauren, can you say something real quick? I want to see if the owls will do speaking. Find out on our next speaker. All right, I have, um, I have three people who have signed on four from online. How many people in the room are here regarding 200 Chamber Street? <laughs> okay. So the way we normally operate with large groups is we ask you to pick a couple people who can speak on the topic. So it's not 20 people repeating the same concerns and the same. Can you raise your hands for one moment so I can have a head count of how many people are here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So for the record, there are 22 people in the room and there are four people who signed up online as well. So for the public record, for people who would like to speak about 200 Chamber Street, which I believe is the restaurant application that is before the board tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna recognize somebody else to speak first and ask if instead of having 22 people repeat the same exact things, is that you elect a couple people who will be able to speak on your behalf. And then we will extend the time to, uh, instead of two minutes each, we'll extend the time for a couple people. Does that sound reasonable? Great. So I need you to talk amongst your for a moment, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> Uh, looking online, we have Stacy and Alec Berman who are also speaking about the same thing. We have Jay and if you don't mind, for the folks from 200 Chambers, you have some people who are online. I'm going to give the, some of the online people an opportunity to speak as well. Uh, is Jay online? This is okay. Yeah. For the folks in the room, for the folks in the room from 200 chambers, yeah. you have some people online. We're going to let the people who signed up before six speak as well. So I'm going to start with them so if you can hear and what they're going to say. Jay, you're going to be next. I'm going to send your request to unmute. Let me see what they have Jay, you are unmuted. Welcome. Thank you for uh, accommodating uh, me to speak tonight. So 
Uh, I'm one of the resident uh, members of the board of managers at 200 Chambers. Uh, just for the community board's information, there are five resident managers um, and four commercial representatives on our nine member board. Um, we sent the community board a letter um, from the five residential board members last week on Friday. Um, there was unanimous agreement amongst the residential board members regarding sending that letter to the community board. Um, what I would say from a board perspective is that we think the letter speaks for itself. Uh, we do want to acknowledge uh, some of the accommodations that the community board has made in the proposed resolution. Um, and we appreciate those accommodations, but there's still significant concerns uh, that we articulated in our letter regarding the building and how we view the proposed tenant um, and the intent and importantly, the intended uses of the space. That's really our objection. Um, we would encourage community board one to review that letter if you haven't already done so. Um, and again, appreciate the accommodations that have been made, but we think that there are additional accommodations that are needed. Um, we want to see a thriving business in that location, um, but we do not think that the application is currently construed uh, for the reasons articulated in the letter um, is an establishment that would uh, uh, be a thriving business and work for all in the community, particularly the residents at 200 chambers. Okay, Jane, thank you very much. Uh, do you know, uh, the, I don't happen to have the letter in front of me at the current moment, the names of the other resident managers so I can see if they are part of the public who signed on. Uh, David, Nick, Uris, and Mary. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very, very much um, and appreciate the time and coming for the folks who are in the room. Who would like to speak 1st and please make sure you have signed in. Yeah, okay. Um, so I am actually uh, can yeah. you stand and say your name for the record? I'm not concerned. Okay. That's okay. So I'm concerned about the size your of name. Your name. Oh, Stacy. Sorry. I yeah, 200 from the 1st. Um, I'm concerned about the size and the capacity and the intended use of the space. Um, I looked at the liquor, the application, and, um, you know, they talk about the bar area only having four tables, 220 seats. Then you look at the schematic and they have 43 seats and six tables. So which is it? Do you prefer the four to 20? Um, they talk about bars. There's three service bars, one stand-up bar. Feel that, you know, one bar is appropriate and enough. I'm not sure what, you know, there is, if you look at the Instagram of the site of the restaurant in um, Long Island, they have roving parts that go around at the bottomless front brunch. I'm not sure if that's what the three service bars is referring to. Um, I also would like to say that I would like to, the doorman, I'd like to under, better understand the business model for why the doorman is needed in an upscale restaurant. Is there another restaurant in Tribeca that has a doorman? Um, and what that expense, I'm assuming, is both brought on because of the anticipated fines and intoxication and interest. So that was the big thing. But the, the two big ones is I'd like to get a better, I'd like to understand what is the intended use of the bar versus the. Um, Oh, and then one other thing on this is how is this a different restaurant if we have the same name, the same chef, and the same menu as the uh, Long Island restaurant? Because in the last two people before, they were saying that. So. Can I just say one quick thing? Well, if you're I'm going, well, stop. No, I'm going. Okay. Are you done? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. For the next person who would like to speak, please stand, yes. say your name for the record. Welcome to the community board. Hi, my name is Emma Tokarczyk, and I just, first of all, it is the restaurant sounds like a fun restaurant if I didn't do it well, the restaurant. <laughs> and last time at the meeting, when I listened in, they were talking about the tree trip, that is, and they said to him, are you sure you don't have any residents living above you? And he's like, yes, I'm sure. Okay, then you can get 1 a.m. But I live above and they got 1 a.m. And it's uh, very worrisome to me because they were going to have, he said that he's going to have amplification and sub loopers. And then I wondered, do you need that for a hard piano and stand up fast? And the, if so, if that's the case, 
can he commit to only those instruments? And, uh, and then he also said that he would not, I would not intend to update any sub group. And I'm worried that it's so late and we have young yes. kids. And I wonder if it, is it legal to have like a cabaret thing and, uh, when you have a residential building? Yes. <laughs> yes. Cabaret? Yes. What's her name again? Eva Tokarczyk. Eva Tokarczyk. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, the next person again, welcome. Thank you. Hi. Your name and for the record and you're on. Hi. Hi, everybody. My name is Shelby Johnston. Um, I am a 20 year New York resident. I've lived in Tribeca for 10 years. The reason I located to relocated to Tribeca is because I want to raise my family there. On this block, we're talking about putting this restaurant. There are two public schools. There's a community center. There are ball fields. This block is surrounded by kid activity. And can I tell you that I also put my two year old to bed above this night floor. It's not a place where we want to be where it does not fit on this block. I'm sorry. And the reality is um, the issue is the hours of operation. 1 a.m. is I love vibrant restaurants. I love it. I think it's great for the neighborhood. Everybody who's saying this is New York City does not understand the fact that this is a family block and people live in this neighborhood for this particular reason. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I just do not understand how we can possibly have a doorman at the building charging cover charges, subwoofers. It makes no sense. I just don't understand where this business fits in this neighborhood at all. And I just can't understand how this could possibly be a person. Thank you so much. The next person, again, please state your name for the record and welcome to the community board. And the board members, please be quiet. Board members. My name is Daniel Gluckman. I'm a resident at 200 Chamber Street. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. Um, I address you as a concerned resident, like we're all here. We're all just really concerned. We're really kind of worried, actually, um, regarding the proposed tenancy of 1804 restaurant groups, NK restaurant, um, at 206 West. 206 West Street, which is actually below all of us at 200 Chamber Street. Um, a letter uh, that uh, Jay mentioned was issued um, by 200 Chamber Street condominium sent by an email uh, to the community board on uh, June 23rd, Friday last week, uh, which outlines in great detail uh, the legitimate concerns of residents um, about the establishment's proposed tenancy. Regarding these concerns, uh, may I respectfully uh, presume to reference uh, Community Board 1's bylaws, which no doubt you are all well versed in. <laughs> um, respectfully, I refer you to Section 4, Subsection D, Item 2 of Community Board 1 bylaws. Um, and I quote from them. Uh, I quote from uh, item two, um, quote, the task forces and subcommittees may be created from time to time by the board chair for the purpose of studying particular issues of concern to the district or the board. And I'll just read that again very quickly, if you don't mind. You don't have to. And you're almost out of time. You have 10 yeah. seconds left. Well, then I'll finish up then. Mm. Um, uh, and with all due respect, I, I'm just bringing that up, um, but might the board uh, chair consider forming a task force uh, to do an informed study of the establishment proposed tenancy at 206 West Street and the substantive effects it will have not only on 200 Chamber Street's residents, but the community as a whole. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I believe that's four in the room and one online. Do you have one more to go if you would like? Uh, between all of you, who did you decide when? Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, I'm Alex Huguet. Uh, I've been uh, living in this neighborhood uh, since 2003 and uh, owner at 200 Chambers since 2011. And the bylaws of our building state that the cabaret on the nightclub is not allowed. 
So, uh, despite the, the, the application process and, and uh, uh, even if uh, this uh, restaurant is uh, getting slightened, uh, they will be, uh, they still have to abide by the bylaws of our building and uh, their mode of operation doesn't seem to be compatible with that. So, we're going to end up in conflict, litigation, it's going to be a cost for everybody. And in addition to what everything that was already expressed, I'm concerned that it's not going to be a good for either uh, the residents of the building or the, the restaurant itself. Thank you. Um, obviously, we don't get involved with the individual bylaws of any individual building. I would make the assumption that that is an internal issue that you have spoken to about the laws in your own building for sets and things like that. Yes, but it's it's something that uh, the restaurant will also have to apply to. So that's between you and the rest. That's between you and you and you and the retail tenants. If that's that's your contracts, their contracts, your buildings. That's outside the purview of what. Of Just pointing out that it's potentially an additional uh, source of conflict going forward no, as no. a consequence of this application. Yeah, duly noted. Thank you. And the gentleman over here who said he didn't talk to the group over there, so he would like his time over here. Again, please rise, say your name, and there you Hi, go. My name is David Wolkenfeld. I'm a couple of members in residence it's one of the Chamber Street. I'll keep it brief. I don't want to uh, overlap what other people have said. I want to let them uh, pay specific attention to the fact that this is an 8,000 square foot space. They will have a live DJ, which will be extremely loud until 1 a.m., which will, will not only impact the residents of our building, but the neighborhood They promote themselves as a bottomless lunch place, which means unlimited alcohol in 90 minute cycles, which I do not believe is good for the, for the neighborhood or the building. And they uh, have dancing. And if you look at their Instagram, you can see all three of those things. Um, so I think it's pretty clear we would welcome a, a restaurant to our building, but this is the way it's proposed is way more than a restaurant with the hours being for 1 a.m. So I would like to do consideration around either scaling something back or understanding that this is more than a restaurant. Thank you. Thank you. The restaurant owner is not here as far as I'm aware, and I have not seen them online yet. So Can right. I have one more quick thing is less than a minute. You need to say your name for the I record, please. Yes, I have. Resided at 200 chambers with the staying in Bloxman for a year and a half. Uh, but to quick, I think it's a legal point in that um, this kind of establishment is prohibited within 200 feet of a school and PF 234's annex entrance. It's not 200 feet. It's not 200 feet. So Sorry. I apologize. It's not 200 feet. It's in the school. It's Sorry. The information is inaccurate. You have, we know. The SLA has, you should please, I encourage you to go to the SLA to map out the 200 foot rule and it does not qualify in the 200 foot Even rule. Even the annex entrance? That's Correct. What I'm talking Correct. About the Correct. No. Correct. I, believe me, there's no one other than the community board who would, who has like, we measure, literally measure 200 feet. So we understand exactly what you're saying. There's been so many things that are not, Technically, two hundred feet. It's the battery just goes this <laughs> Okay. Um, seeing no other hands on that uh, one over here. Carter, yeah, I think one you, last one minute. If if it is something new that has not been said by anyone else before, that adds one minute. Please say your name for the record. My name is Carter Suits. I also recite the two hundred changes. Um, so the applicant, I mean, the concern is we'll open up a restaurant. We're concerned about this not being a restaurant and it's a nightclub. Right? And they claim to be a high end steakhouse. So I just have some very quick data for you. The Frisco Grill at the Brooklyn Mall, they close by 9 p.m. most nights, 9 30 on Fridays and Saturdays. Wood Gang Steakhouse, right across the street from the city hall. Hold on. Yeah. I responded back to the building on that because you know that that is not actually what their liquor license is. No. So my point here is even, even though their liquor license allowed them to open later, they still choose to close by 9.30 or 10 o'clock. So my point here is if these folks are seriously a restaurant and not a nightclub, I don't know why we can't limit them just to 10 o'clock. They should object to that because as you can see, 
all the comparable competitions close by 9 30 10 o'clock <laughs> okay thank you thank you very very much for everybody for coming uh, i do not see any is there anyone else from the public in the room who would like to speak on any other topic that i have not seen sign in okay knowing that um everyone who spoke today and everyone who has not spoken i encourage you very strongly to make sure that you sign in i don't know i don't see everyone having signed in so it's just my heads up if you're here in the room please do so okay all right yeah. 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 Okay. So, Darlene Lutz spoke early. She was going to speak for the public hearing. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to close. I'm a resident of the building as well. My name is Nick. Oh, stop. Hold on. We, we actually got, we're going to move on to the next session. Because I asked if there was anybody who had anything that was brand new to add. It's a procedural question. Sure. What's your name, sir? Uh, Nick DeFore. Okay. Hi, Nick. You did sign in. Thank you. I did, yes. Um, procedurally, the, the committee meetings, here's the application, creates the resolutions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. This then goes to the state labor authority. As a recommendation, or the state liquor authority have separate jurisdiction outside of this that will be appealed to anyway? Great questions. And I'm going to have Susan answer because there is a second opportunity for all of you to go. Susan? We, uh, after we approve with all the qualifications. We don't know if we're approving yet. I don't approve you. Now, I do have to. Put the box and gloves on all the time. Uh, there is the opportunity. We get notice that this is going to go before the SLA. And you as a community and we as the community board, depending how this all comes out, we go in front of the community uh, to the SLA to talk about this license if they haven't agreed to the stipulations we have requested uh, or that we want stronger stipulations and we go to the SLA. And I will tell you that we have gone, uh, the former chair and I, about four times in my lifetime as, uh, on this committee, four or five times, and they have never rejected outright an application. What we have gotten is a few more stringent qualifications that the community board decided not to do. But basically, they see their role as allowing restaurants to open bars, whatever. And our goal here, and I'm going to say this so I won't say it again, is to try to get the resolution as tight as we possibly can and to get the owner to agree to the stipulations. So that's what we're trying to do. And there can be comments from you and we can make amendments before, not during our discussion, because we have to have a whole discussion. So that's where we're going. But there is the opportunity to go to the SLA. Prior to them being approved. Prior to them being approved. There is their approval process and we go there as a group or won't we go alongside some You, we will go with you if right. we agree with you. Or you go on your own. Or you go on your and own. And the community board goes on their own. I would highly suggest you know, the opportunity that the operator agrees to a stipulation is the strongest form of modification that we have. It's correct. Right. But if as part of the advisory role. If we say nothing, then the SLA says, oh, they must have thought everything was fantastic. There's no stipulations. There's no nothing. That's great. And it's. But you make the SLA aware of the fact that there's 40 people here. It will be. 
in the yes. we'll we'll letter we'll live here as a resident. You are not. I would highly suggest that you ask any more. Can we just say, please note that the restaurant owner isn't here and how this is going to be a conducted partnership? Well, uh, it's not come up again. I want everybody to understand that what they do in East Meadow is not what they claim they were going to do here and what our stipulations will say and what the resolution will say. We have put a number of things in and that's what we're trying to do. And I will type, we will type it up as best as we can. I have a whole group here who are always on my behind and they will make sure I do what's right. So, um, but I want you to understand that that's all we can do. And if we reject it outright, it goes to the SLA and then, you know, you can get up there and they will make all the decisions. I don't like that to happen. What is the next SLA? When is the SLA? We don't know. This has to go through another process. It goes through the hospital for hearing, I think, is the next step. Right? And I, I, think, I think I am. And um, uh, then we will get notification and we will notify you. Of course. That's, that's why you need to sign in. Thank you, Jess. Okay. Thank you, Tom. So, with that note, nope, Joe? I have a question on the, on the public session. Or? No. no. Okay, great. Because we are about to close at 6 49 the public session. We're going to discuss this when we get to it. Correct. We close the public session at 6.49. We thank the public for their participation. The public hearing was supposed to open on uh, community theme back for open restaurants based on the year round sidewalk cafes and seasonal road bed dining. I would ask a few of you to, to stay, stay and listen to the resolution and the discussion. You're aware of it. <laughs> oh, okay. you, can't, you can't shout out me now. All right. Okay. Quiet in the room, please. Thank you. Quiet in the room, Lord. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Do we have anybody here to speak during the public hearing on roadbed dining and sidewalk cafes? Seeing no one in the room, and Darlene spoke earlier during the public session. And we recognize her at that point. Darlene, if you have anything else to add, I'll give you one last opportunity. And request that you unmute. I don't know. You know. Darlene? Seeing no hand up. Uh, then and Darlene seems okay with what she has already said. Then we are going to close the public hearing at 6:50, mm -hmm. which means that we start the business session of the board. Oh. Okay, we'll do an adoption of the May 2023 minutes, which is roll call. So we are a little short on team today and roll call. So Mimi's going to do it, please again. Make sure you say your last name and your book. Okay. Right. And Russo. Yeah. Um, uh, Alice Blank. Yeah. Blank. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Brown Kennedy. Brown Kennedy. Yeah. Thank you. Cameron. Cameron. Oh, yes. Okay.
Sir, can you unmute? Ah, yes, I, I couldn't hear it. The audio disappeared there. Uh, Bill Corman, yes. Thanks. Curtis? Oh, Curtis is not here tonight. She's watching. Yeah. Oh, got it. Okay. Uh, Flores. Flores. Thanks. Blanco? Blanco? Forsberg? Forsberg, yes. Thanks. Friedman? Thanks. Froman? Froman, yes. Thank you. Galloway? Galloway, yes. Thanks. Goldstein? Goldstein, yes. Thanks. Grayson? Grayson, yes. Thank you. Uh, Joyce? Absent. Juke? You leave. Oh, what's your vote? <laughs> yes. Thanks. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Janelle? Oh, yes. Thanks. Okay. Learner. Learner, yes. Thank you. Lewinson. Thank you. Lynn. Yes. Lynn, yes. Thanks. Lion. Lion, yes. Thank you. McHugh. Meltzer. Meltzer, yes. Minsley. Minsley, yes. Moore. Oh, yeah. The sound keeps going in and out. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. It might be the connection. We're working on it. Portia Corey. Portia Corey? Portia Corey, yes. Thank you. Robinson. Robinson, yes. Thank you. And Cheer. Cheer, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Star. Mm -hmm. Absent. Yeah. Jimmy Sun. Also absent. Very Sun. Very yes. Thank you. Thompson. Thompson, yes. Thank you. Townley. Yes. Thank you. You. You, yes. Thank you. Seltzer. Seltzer, yes. Thank you. Okay. Motion passes for our approval of the minutes. Thank you very much. We're going to do our updates from our elected officials. Now, I saw Deborah Glick in the room. So, Deborah, since you still here. are here, you get to go first. And I will happily move over for you if you would like to sit in a minute. I'd like, like to stand. I've been sitting enough. Okay. Um, first of all, it's great to see you all uh, and to see you in person outside of little boxes, so that's very exciting. Um, this is my first session as chair of the Environmental Conservation Committee of the New York State Assembly. Chair, so there. Very, very uh, learning curve, but uh, I think we had a lot of good success and happy that there were several of my bills that have passed both houses. Um, one that only passed the assembly, I'll start with that one, and that was a ban on lead ammunition on state lands, because it not only taints the land and winds up in gut piles that could uh, affect scavengers like eagles. Eagles are dying of lead poisoning. It's also not so great when they donate it to a, um, uh, a food uh, um, or, you know, uh, food donations, uh, because lead shatters. So non-lead ammunition is much safer. It stays together and does not uh, shatter in meat. So, and microscopic, no matter what they say about they have a wound channel and they clean it out, it's <laughs> impossible. Uh, now, that only passed the assembly. I'm sad to say that we could not uh, get that through the uh, state Senate. But what we did get were a number of important measures, some large and some small. Uh, they still have to go to the governor to be signed into law. But um, we got a change in the regulations for geothermal boreholes. They were being treated as if they were extractive oil and gas wells, as opposed to if they went below 500 feet, which for a lot of commercial uh, not so much for an individual house, but for commercial um, structures, they need to go much further down. And they were, and it was more expensive. There was more permitting, so that will make it easier and cheaper for more geothermal to be produced for 
um, heating and cooling in commercial structures. That was a smaller bill, but very important. Um, we banned the uh, slaughter of uh, horses for human consumption. We don't have a slaughterhouse in New York State, but they get shipped to um, Canada, and uh, there are uh, countries that um, use horse meat for uh, human or animal feed. Uh, horses, unlike uh, other critters like cows or sheep, uh, sometimes get medications that would never be in your food supply. So it's totally wrong to do it, and it's also a little bit horrifying. So um, that uh, took a, a long debate, but we got that passed. Uh, the Birds and Bees uh, uh, Act, which was a banning of neonicotinoids, uh, coatings on seeds for corn, wheat, and soybean. Uh, it is a persistent neurotoxin that goes into the ground. It affects birds and bees, pollinators, but it also affects other beneficial insects and ultimately washes into our water supply. Very bad. So um, we ban that. We hope we can get, you know, clearly the chemical industry will be lobbying strongly for the governor not to sign it, but we're going to ask everybody to reach out to the governor's office and say, sign these bills. Uh, we also, um, the Supreme Court had a terrible ruling that undermined the Clean Water Act. It had to do with wetlands. Uh, we have large streams are class A streams. There's class B streams, but class C streams are slightly smaller uh, and are usually uh, not, you can't, you don't need to get a permit uh, to do certain things, things like put a structure over them and so forth. We passed a bill, very important now that the Supreme Court has undermined the Clean Water Act, uh, that would require permitting for work that would be done in the stream bed and on the um, the side of the streams. So um, again, we think that that, uh, and we added that the soil and water conservation associations that operate all over upstate uh, would be exempt from this because they work closely with local government so that it won't all fall to the DEC for permitting. Uh, which was one of the arguments in, uh, against the bill in the past. And then um, we banned uh, wildlife killing contests. Uh, these are contests where people sign up, you register for uh, $20 for a fee, and then whether it's the volunteer fire department or the American Legion or a bar, uh, you register and uh, over a fixed period of time, they have a specific species, be it a coyote or a squirrel or crows, and whoever kills the largest number of that species or the biggest specimen, whatever the contest might be, uh, wins the prize, uh, cash prizes. Um, it is a tradition uh, in upstate New York. Um, they felt this was a direct attack on the Second Amendment, which of course it's not. Um, and we understand that people have certain cultural traditions, but we also understand that we move forward and we learn that disrupting uh, nature, particularly as we see habitat loss and so forth, that there, you know, that there are reasons not to have these unregulated um, contests, and so they were banned. So I'm really hoping uh, those were um, my bills uh, specifically, but we also did some other things that um, were really important. We uh, passed uh, a bill that would extend the coverage for postpartum uh, treatment uh, in um, for a year for those individuals who are covered by Child Health Plus uh, and by um, uh, Medicaid. And uh, so that's very important because for a lot of uh, people um, that uh, uh, the period of um, a few months is insufficient. And so it's very important for this sort of coverage to be available 
so that people who are, are facing postpartum uh, depression uh, can be assisted. Um, we are holding an Omni, is, you know, Metro cards are on their way out. Sadly, I like those machines. Um, I like the colors. I like, I thought it was very, uh, very uh, Sesame Street. Anyway, um, they're on their way out and Omni is on its way in. We are holding a couple of um, uh, programs with the MTA and Omni at um, uh, Greenwich House, uh, the Center on the Square on July 12th and on July 19th at Independence Plaza. Uh, again, associated with Greenwich House. Open to the public, people who want to know more about Omni and aren't, you know, maybe not comfortable using a credit card when you're walking into the subway and might want to use an Omni card. You might want to learn how to get that instead of using, you know, taking out a credit card and tapping it with, you know, crowds around you. Um, I'd rather have the Omni card myself. Um, and of course, we have in our report um, a lot of the resources for people who will be dealing with rent increases. And, and one of the things I will say, and I will close on this, that I thought was really very sneaky in the rent guidelines board. Most, it, most of the time, it's either a one year lease or a two year lease, and it's a flat percentage that impacts the leases, and you know what the deal is. But the two year lease is bifurcated. So you have a one year, you get a certain percentage, which then that increase goes into the base rent. And the second increase is based not on the original rent, but on that new increased rent. So that regardless of what they say in the press, it's actually for two year leases, it's just over a 6% increase. So people should be aware of that. I know it's being the mayor, I think, said that it was, you know, around 4% or something. Yeah, Obviously, he didn't read the fine print or even the big print. Um, but um, even the papers are just sort of adding and saying, oh, it's a 5% increase. It's not. It's it is just over 6% because of the way in which for the first time they have bifurcated that two year lease into the first year. And so the second year actually starts at the higher increased rent. So um, we have resources for people who are going to need support in figuring out how to um, pay their rent or sign up for other uh, services because their income isn't going to um, be able to cover their food, etc. So with that, um, I thank you for your kind attention and it's just great to be back. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm board, really happy to board be members with questions. We're going to start with Susan, then we'll go to Jeff. So, <laughs> uh -oh. I went to Stone Street to ask about, since I have a, a, reduced, rate. a reduced rate card, about a reduced rate Omni card. And they told me they knew nothing about it, that there was no way I could, that they had no idea when they were coming and to come back. Is that correct? Well, um, I will say this, there, uh, the Omni, if you choose to have it on your credit card, there is, you can sign up for it and you can sign up to have it as a reduced fare um, on your credit card. That can be folded right in. If you want the actual Omni card, what we have been told from the Omni people, not the MTA people who clearly are not well informed about what the process is. Allegedly, okay, I got it. Allegedly, <laughs> everyone who has a reduced fare card is supposed to get a communication from Omni uh, and access to an Omni reduced fare card. The timing of that is not clear. Yeah, from your lips to her ears, we'll see. <laughs> and what is the timing in general? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, sorry. Nope, Wendy, sorry. Got to go in order, Joe's next. When is this supposed to be in effect? <laughs> what hey, thanks, Joe. It's rolling. It's rolling out now. I mean, people no, are no, panicking. But when do? When's the last day? Use my bank so Um, that. Twenty twenty four. You've got all year. <laughs> I believe that's when it is. Allegedly. Allegedly. Right.
Do any other board members have any other questions for assembly member? Good. Just to follow, follow up, we had a discussion earlier about uh, Sammy's law and the law that would allow New York City to set its own speed limits, and it, it failed again. And um, but I just was going to ask you, like, you know, first of all, I wanted to express my profound disappointment that it didn't get a full vote so that we can see who supported it and who didn't. But also, what do you see as far as a law like Sammy's law's future and well, let me say three things about that. We don't bring bills to the floor in order to have them fail. So um, we know in advance whether a bill is going to pass or not. Um, and I understand your desire to know who voted which way. And when the bill has sufficient support to pass, it will come to the floor. And then you can see if there were people who voted against it, as I have lots of people who voted against various bills that I talked about having passed. There are people who voted against that. So those records are online. That's public information, and that's always available um, under what the bill number is. Um, the reason, uh, the way in which the, the House operates, because we are in the majority, is if there is a, um, a bill that has some controversy, which is to say, not a lot, not obvious universal support or obvious majority support, we sometimes have a conference. Not every bill gets conferenced because we have 102 Democrats and people are very wordy, even when we give them a time limit, but they don't always stick to it. Um, so, so the issue is when something comes up and that bill did come up, it did not have sufficient support within the Democratic conference in order to be brought to the floor. So um, the city didn't do a lot of lobbying. The folks who cared about it lobbied um, and were very happy they had a majority of support, but half of that support was um, not Democratic support. Uh, so if you're going to get something to pass in the House, you have to really focus on Democrats, not so much having Republican support uh, because they are in the minority. And just as the Congress operates uh, a certain way, um, so do we. Um, and I spoke in favor of it, but a lot of people don't trust the Department of Transportation witness the way in which they've operated open dining. So. That has been one of the reasons that um, I think that's poisoned the well when it comes to DOT, as well as other issues that individual members have had with the way in which DOT has operated in their districts. So turning over control to DOT is not something that is universally embraced. That's the thank gentlest you. expression I can yeah. hear. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Come on. On that note, that reminds me, if we all behave decently, we can actually move the business of the board along. <laughs> After everything, I can let everybody out early enough to go vote. Yeah. Just saying. Okay. So yeah. next, uh, we have Emily. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's exactly. an over under on that. I'm definitely with you on that one. Okay, for uh, Emily from Senator Kavanaugh's office. Oh, I'm sorry, Tevin, you're here. I apologize. I did that by accident. Tevin, you are first. You feel free say, to Emily can Emily can totally go. It's okay. I can go out. Tevin, we okay. start with you, and then we go to Emily, and okay. after Emily, we'll go to Jasper. So sure thing. I'll be very brief. Um, I know. A lot of people have uh, been reaching out to our office. I'm Tevin Williams from Congressman Goldman's office. We've had a lot of people reach out about passports. Uh, there is a huge backlog of them, but we've thankfully been getting very lucky with a lot of them. So please, if you have any issues or questions about your passport, uh, we know it's summertime, everyone's starting to travel again. So please reach out to us if you have anything about that. Uh, at the end of Pride Month, uh, we have been a co-sponsor of the Equality Act at the federal level, which is uh, another piece of the Civil Rights Movement in 1964, which would ex uh, obviously go further when it comes to LGBTQ and people and how they 
uh, decide to present themselves. And then number two, I would just say um, we have also been active with U.S. Senator Gillibrand on the mental health crisis here. And we just introduced a piece of legislation on helping people that need help in the mental health crisis. As many as you know, um, there are plenty of people we see on the streets, on the subway that need some help and need some additional pieces of uh, health care when it comes to Medicaid. And so we've introduced a piece of legislation with Senator Gillibrand on that um, to help a lot of people when it comes to the mental health crisis across the country, but expanding those services with Medicaid. So those are the two things I wanted to speak about, and that's it. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions, any board members for Kevin? Okay, seeing no questions for Tevin, thank you very, very, very much. Next time we hope to see you in our lovely uh, borough president's office for a in person uh, visit. So thank Absolutely. you very much. Mm -hmm. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I promise to make it there in person one day too. So I'm Emily from Senator Kavanaugh's office. I'm starting out with some legislative updates. As you all know, the session ended earlier this month. Well, we're obviously extremely disappointed that we weren't able to pass a broader housing package that included good cause eviction. We were still able to accomplish a number of things that we're proud of on the housing side. Um, I won't go through bill numbers, but if you're interested, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we passed a bill that would address some of the gaps in the HSTPA from 2019, including banning Frankensteining of apartments, increasing penalties on landlords who are improperly registering their apartments and increasing agency oversight. We also passed a bill relating to tenants' rights and rent overcharges, a bill relating to protecting victims of deed theft, which we worked with the AG's office on. We also were able to pass our ground rent rebate program for Battery Park City, eligible Battery Park City residents. Unfortunately, um, that bill did not pass the assembly, um, but we did pass it in the Senate. Outside of housing, uh, we passed some environmental conservation bills, including a rechargeable battery recycling bill, mattress recycling, as well as all electric buildings earlier this year in the budget. We also passed our bill to make Lunar New Year's school holiday in New York State, which is very exciting. Um, we also passed a bill requiring notification to businesses and their employees who worked in the area during 9-11 of their eligibility for the World Trade Center Health Program. And we passed a bill requiring courts to notify defendants of immigration um, and deportation consequences for guilty pleas, which we passed last year as well and was vetoed by the governor, but hoping that we can get her to sign it this year. Um, so that's a little recap, but if you are interested in learning more, please feel free to reach out. And on the community side, as a lot of you know, we've been working hard to pause the approvals process for Five World Trade Center and secure additional affordability at the site. The project was scheduled to be voted on at the Public Authorities Control Board meeting last week, but we were able to get it pulled off the agenda. We don't have a great sense of timing of when it'll be put back on, but we know that the state is looking to move very quickly. So we're continuing to work to explore every single possible potential source of funding and are encouraging our uh, state agencies to work collaboratively with us on that. In addition to that, we're continuing to work with our elected colleagues, the board and the community on additional conversations um, and transparency from the city on the Manhattan Borough Base Jail. We had another meeting with uh, the deputy mayor and other reps from city hall last week, and we're following up with them on a lot of the things that came out of that, including securing additional safety assurances, an independent monitor for the demolition and the construction, and a real public input process for the design of the new building before a contract gets awarded. Uh, almost done. Um, site mobilization on 250 Water Street is currently ongoing and phase two of the remediation is going to start up in full force pretty soon. We'll be continuing our working group meetings and are in the process of scheduling the next one, but we've already had some questions come in that we're getting answered. So if you have any questions right now about what's going on, please feel free to reach out to us. And finally, uh, very excited to share that our local legislation enabling the screen and tree expansion to former Mitchell Lama and Battery Park City residents has finally passed the city council. <laughs> we are encouraging everyone who's newly eligible to apply and please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or issues in the process. We are going to need separate local legislation for the she and D section for homeowners in Battery Park City, but we are working on that with um, council members. Marte's office right now. So that's it for me. Happy to take any questions. Does anybody have any questions for Emily Lang or Senator Kavanaugh's office? Seeing no questions and no hands, Emily, thank you so much. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you next month in person. All righty.
Jasper Scott, you're next. After Jasper, we will go Manhattan Borough President um, and our mayor and our city council person representatives. Jasper, you're next. Thank you. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Uh, first, I will uh, echo uh, calls and promises to be there in person one lovely day. I know they may fall on deaf ears, but I'll show you in person. Um, I represent assembly member Grace Lee. Um, as assembly member Glick and Emily before me uh, mentioned, session has just ended uh, and um, there were a lot of exciting and promising uh, pieces of legislation that were passed or at least uh, uh, had progress made on them. Um, for us, we are looking back at our first year in, this, in the legislature um, and uh, a lot of exciting achievements uh, that we managed to make during that time. Um, we, uh, we passed a uh, first in the nation bill to make Lunar New Year a statewide uh, public school holiday uh, across all of New York. Um, and then we, uh, we worked closely with, uh, with our colleagues to uh, get a lot of other exciting stuff passed uh, in, you know, as far as environmental conservation, um, as far as, um, public safety, as far as healthcare, um, et cetera. Um, I won't go into all the details of that. Um, Emily and Assembly Member Glick before me did a really good job of covering a lot of that. Um, but um, yeah, it's been an exciting year and we look forward to uh, starting our work over the summer to um, uh, work on new legislation yeah, yeah. for next year. Yeah, we work on new legislation Sorry? Okay, does anybody have any questions for Assembly Member Lee's Jasper Scott? Seeing none in the room, Jasper, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you in person next month. Uh, Andrew Chang, you're going to be next, followed by Robin Forrest and Max. Andrew, you ready? Ready. Oh, wow, in the room. Nice, <laughs> nice way to go. <laughs> now that is how you make an end. <laughs> Yes, I was just in the back and I made my way around through the uh, the kitchen. Um, there we go. Uh, Thank you. I guess uh, three things I want to mention is first, during our June 2023 Manhattan Borough Board meeting, we passed a resolution in support of the Department of City Planning's City of Yes for Carbon Neutrality Zoning Tax Amendment. This would help modernize our city's zoning regulations to, to support our climate goals. So this resolution was passed by our community, our Manhattan community boards, the city council, and our Manhattan borough president. And um, yeah, secondly, we introduced new legislation regarding public restrooms. Uh, intro 1076, which would require the city to identify public facing municipal buildings with 88 accessible bathrooms, such as this building, um, and make at least one of these bathrooms open to the public. Uh, and that's an easy thing to do, right? Um, and <laughs> intro 1077, which will require the mayor to develop a report that proposes a capital project plan and implementation timelines for the installation and maintenance of public restrooms. So having a plan in action and then, you know, achieving that plan. And um, lastly, I want to mention that uh, we released a report regarding the future of AI in New York City. The report is called A Call to Action on AI in New York City. It's on our website, manhattanbp.nyc.gov. Uh, in the report, we highlight the immense potential of AI technology as well as the, as well as the associated risks associ uh, that generative AI could pose. <clears throat> in, the, in, the, in the report, we outline proposals for our city's government, schools, uh, employment sector, creative professionals, local elections, and AI safety initiatives. We call for the development of AI. We call for the development of AI usage policies in government agencies, the integration of AI education in schools, planning for workforce workforce disruptions due to AI, protections of IP intellectual property in AI applications, the guarding against AI generated misinformation in elections, and the establishment of an AI safety research hub. Um, and then people can submit their comments on this report and what they feel about, how they feel about AI on our website as well. Um, well, once again, if I didn't introduce myself, I'm Andrew Chang from the Manborough President's Office. Welcome to our space. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you very much for hosting us. Is that, oh, 
question. Um, yes. So, is there the AI safety research hub? Is there is that is there a time frame for that? Uh, these are just recommendations from recommendation. our report. There's nothing okay. that's um, definite, but um, I'll send you a look to report. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll check it out. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions for Andrew before he disappears? Okay. okay. Fantastic. Thank you, Andrew, very much. Thanks for coming, Robin. You're next. Hello, I guess next uh, next month it's in person. So anyway, great to see everybody. I have three quick announcements. Uh, one is if you haven't already heard, Summer Streets is coming back. And in Manhattan, the Summer Streets will uh, take place on Saturday, August 5th, 12th and 19th. Um, for downtown, it will, um, the route will be Lafayette and Park Avenue up to 109th street. Um, other, other areas are much further north than board 1, but I did want to tell you that and I'm happy to send further information along. Uh, if you need it, uh, second, I don't know if you heard the mayor's announcement, but there was a decision made to put an older adult liaison in every police precinct. Uh, the idea behind that uh, is, first of all, it was done on uh, World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, but also um, it's, it's part safety, it's part connecting seniors to services and helping them uh, determine ways for themselves to keep safe and um, I don't know the timeline of when those people uh, will join the precincts, but it's a citywide effort and uh, moving from older adults as my colleague calls them not seniors. Um, I don't know if you heard, but today the mayor made an announcement that all New York City public schools starting in pre K and going through 12th grade will be required to facilitate two to five minutes of mindful breathing practices in schools every day. And the idea behind this is to try to increase physical and mental health and enhance social emotional learning and really enhance learning. So I think it's an inch personally, I think it's intriguing. Um, we'll see what happens. I think it's, uh, I think it's cool, but anyway, um, that's it for me. If you have any questions, happy to try to answer them. Does anybody have any questions for the mayor's office? See, saying no hands in the room, Robin, I'm going to say, um, and thank you. Um, <laughs> <Home> back. <laughs> Take care. And thank you. Good night. Bye. See you. In the Good to see everybody. Bye bye. Exactly. All righty. So, last but not least, we have Max from Councilmember Marquez's office. And Max, I'm sure you guys are crazy busy, but thank yeah. you for making. I, I hope I hope I have an excuse for not being there in person tonight. Um, yes. So yeah. I'll, I'll 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 be quick. Uh, so like one second. So yeah. So on the legislative front, you know, as as Emily mentioned. We're able to pass uh, the SCREE bill, so now Battery Park City buildings and also former Mitchell Lamas like, like IPN can now apply for SCREE. So, you know, as Emily mentioned, you can contact their office, contact our office if, if you need help applying to see if you qualify. Anything, you know, any help with that, we can we we can help you with that. Uh, additionally, some bills we've uh, co-sponsored on that have been uh, introduced and passed. So, uh, 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 Councilmember Lynn Shulman in Queens uh, introduced a bill that we co-sponsored that passed, which would. Uh, make it illegal for a landlord to rent to an illegal smoke shop. So this is going to be a way I think they'll be able to be fined up to $10,000 uh, for for renting out two smoke shops, uh, unlicensed smoke shops. So kind of just a new way to kind of tackle the the kind of proliferation of all these smoke shops. And then additionally, uh, we're co-sponsored a bill that Council Member Barron just introduced uh, to stop the plan to move uh, city retirees to uh, the Medicare Advantage plan. For those who don't know, uh, there's currently a plan that would force city retirees to go off of their current public health care, move to a more privatized health care. Many retirees um, would lose a lot of the doctors that they are currently covered. Uh, so, you know, we really want to make sure that people have all the health care options they know that they need. Uh, so, the, on, the, on the legislative front, on the community front, 
uh, you know, we were happy to co-host and, and take part in the park row first, the re-envisioning or reimagining meeting. I think, I think it was a good first step. I think, you know, a lot of community concerns were heard. It's still the beginning of a, you know, larger community engagement process. So, you know, we'll make sure everyone's updated and make sure, you know, every, everyone knows what's going on and any, any future meetings that are happening. Um, we also joined the Battery Park City Authority and EDC for some of the community meetings uh, for the Northwest Battery Park City Resiliency Project and the FIDIC Port Resiliency. And then lastly, I know the public session, some people brought up the 111 Washington Street issue. You know, we are working on it. We're working closely uh, with the community board, with, with some of the residents. You know, we're pushing to get a site inspection uh, for a stop work order. And there's actually this Friday going to be uh, a, a site visit with DEC, the State Department of Health, and then we're hoping to get also the Department of Buildings. And then with that, I will, I'll call it and take any questions. Okay, does anybody have any questions for Council Member Marquez's office? Seeing none, thank you so much. And I'm sure we will see you, Max, when it comes to yes. 111 Washington Front. So thank you yeah. very much. Right. There is some thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Uh, thank you very much for. Uh, oh, uh, I apologize. Lupe Hernandez from the public advocates office. Lupe, I did not see you online. So thank you so much. Let me find you and move you over. Thank you for sending me a note. And after Lupe, we will close that session. Lupe, you're now a panelist. Welcome. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much and my apologies for not being in person. I will definitely be there next month as well. Um, my name is Lupe Hernandez. I'm one of the community organizers for education and opportunity with the office of the public advocate, Jumani Williams. Thank you um, for having us in this space. We um, have had a busy month and we just uh, wrapped up with pride. So thanks to many of the community members that marched with us. I wanted to update on some of the legislative updates that we had last month. The New York City Council voted to pass the public advocates um, worst landlord law to help prevent fraudulent repairs by bad landlords and increase accountability. This bill is a uh, part of the worst landlords accountability act and it's a 2 bill package, which comes out of the public advocates annual worst landlord watch list. Together, the legislation and the Worst Landlord Accountability Act will help tenants get the repairs they need and make the worst landlords pay for their negligence and deception. And just to show that there are consequences for the conduct that puts landlords on that wash list. Um, we also passed a local law to amend the administrative code for the city of New York in relation to the pedestrian safety report reporting. Um, we have also passed administrative code for the city of new york in relation to increasing those penalties for the violations issued by the department of housing preservation and department and certifying those corrections as violations in multiple dwellings and we have also i apologize the local law to amend um, the administrative code of city of new york in relation to cre the creation and distribution of a statement of rights for persons experienced homelessness and residing in the shelters and the local law um, to amend the administrative code for city of new york in relation to education about city standards for respectful care at birth health care proxy forms and patients rights um i also wanted to flag that we have um done some great efforts in with our infrastructure and environmental justice team in regards to the e-bikes and just wanted to let know let you know that the equitable commute project was one of the new york city's office of public advocates um, state of the people partners they have shared some exciting news with us um, where they are working to uber is working with e-bike company zumo and a nonprofit called the equitable commute project on two different trade-in programs According to the company, delivery workers can trade in their older e-bikes for credit that they can invest in for a new e-bike, um, as well as access rent to own pricing models and priority repairs and services. Um, we want to flag that this is also to help make sure that um, deliveristas are actually getting um, proper care of these bikes and, and make sure that we reduce any um, hazard, fire hazards that we have seen taking place all over the city. Um, yeah, I'm sure I'm not forgetting anything else. Um, a lot of the events we had were great and 
just I can if if possible, I can share in the chat just ways for you to stay in touch with our office. Um, Want to remind folks we're always up, open to legislative suggestions and uh, that this public advocate has actually passed more legislation than any public advocate even combined. So um, please feel free to keep in touch with our office and we're happy to work with all of you. And I'm here for any questions if needed. Does anybody have any questions for the public advocate's office? No. Okay, Lupe, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you and so we much. Will see you in person. Okay, with that, we close all the updates from our electives. Let's put the slides back up, please, um, for our chairperson's report. Next slide, please. <laughs> So, for everybody to know, the reason why people know Susan laughs is Susan heard that when you say next slide in the room, the people upstairs, uh, where are we? Downstairs, upstairs, upstairs hear you, but it takes about 10 seconds to 20. So, I'm supposed to count to 10 or 20 before I then again say, next slide, please. You didn't mean that. <laughs> oh, I did because I don't want this one. Oh, <laughs> sorry. So let's come. There we go. Okay. So it's been a busy month. I want to start by saying how excited we were at the end of May to do the Brooklyn Banks opening. Rosa was there. She spoke lovely and cryingly, but she spoke lovely. And thanks to Mayor Adams for the great press event. It was really exciting. That was one of the last events that Lucian went to, and Wendy came with all the stuff that she always talks about. Signs. It was awesome. So we had she a good time. She was exactly in a sunshine dress. Exactly. <laughs> it's been a busy month um, going to meetings and things like that. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Marte. We co-hosted a FIDI Battery Park City Town Hall um, meeting that was really quite nice. I submitted public testimony to DEC regarding the hearing on the waters and public accessibility. There is an opportunity DEC looking at, um, and we have already passed through numerous resolutions on being able to have a plus pool, being uh, looking for access to the Brooklyn Beach, and looking to have touchdown access on the west side. So, and out at Governor. So, there we go. Um, we co-sponsored the DOT Park Room uh, Visioning Public Session, so that was really amazing to see lots of different groups, and it was in multiple languages. Um, still working with the Parks Department, they hope to come all in July with revised plans, I believe, on that, so that'll be good. Um, Alice and I were at the Climate Coalition of Lower Manhattan. Um, I'm not going to say very much about that or about City Hall and the borough based jails, um, except for the fact that um, a lot of a lot more attention is needed to every resiliency project that's happening between that and the Battery Park City Authority, simply because they're redefining our entire shoreline in CB1 from tip to tip. There's not one part that will be untouched. If you care about any parts of the waterfront from the Brooklyn Bridge all the way around, please go to the meeting, speak up, and say whatever you need to say. So, um, what a difference a day makes. Those two pictures are taken out of the office. So, when you're in the offices next mm -hmm. month for meetings up on 22, that is one of the days with the poor air quality. And the other one was taken last Friday. Mm -hmm. So, I can see that. Next slide, please. Okay, we, uh, oh, and I need to thank whoever did go to the governor's press conference today. Jess, I think we sent you for community board one. So thank you for going. Um, the FIDA Seaport master plan update redesign the east side will be coming up shortly. We've already talked about the public authority control board uh, being pulled from the agenda. DCP city of yes for economic opportunity has a virtual information session in July. That is the only one they will not do a pre presentation to community board one in July. We are off in August. They come for they start in October. So I am highly recommending that everybody go in July and we will share that information back out. So there is no. No confusion again, committee meetings are going to be in person at 1 center street room 2202. Please make sure you arrive early enough downstairs to go through screening to get upstairs to be on time. Um, 
hybrid will be available, but it's approved by extraordinary circumstances only. We are waiting for feedback from the Manhattan Borough President's Office as to whether or not we are required to have a hybrid or not and how we will do it. The most important thing to remember, think about how difficult it was to get you all here for this. Every committee needs to have a form. It's just the way it goes and form has to be in the room. I'm not the one that makes the rules. I just have to announce them. Next slide. Okay. Out and about in Lower Manhattan. Mimi is doing an amazing job on our newsletter. Thank you to our volunteer, Mimi. Um, so, send photos. If you're out and about, you go to an event in Lower Manhattan, like email photos in. We'd love to use your photos. Okay. Again, photos taken um, on your walks in the morning from the office during the day if you come and visit. Or if you look at that fantastic photo on the bottom, that's what your evening meetings will look like. If we're really fortunate, you're not here late enough to take that photo. Okay. Um, and then we want to thank, um, we have an eighth annual Independence Day celebration. Catherine McVeigh is always amazing about making sure that we are invited to the Independence Day parade. We are a co sponsor on this. Um, I know that font is small, mm -hmm. but uh, you will get an email about this shortly. You will. The other thing is, please take a look in the newsletter. I try and make sure that our reports, even the chair reports, it used to be 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You really don't need to hear that much from me, but every opportunity to be engaged, we try and put in the newsletter. So if it's a meeting that's by the borough president, that's by somebody, or that's an interesting thing, it'll go out on the weekends in the newsletters. If it's important information for changes, public hearings that we will not have the time to opine, we will put that out in the newsletter. Super important that you see and read that because of the way the timelines work. We cannot do public testimony on something we haven't opined on because if the board doesn't ratify what the public testimony is supposed to be about, there's no way to pull it back. So for items that come from city government or state or federal that only give us a two week or sometimes a 30 day and they don't work with our cycle, we do ask for extensions, but when we don't, we share the information out. So you as individuals and citizens can say, hey, I'm going to go talk about that. All right. And with that, I close my chair report and remind you all to be paying attention to the waterfront as you're going around. Executive committee. Next slide, please. There we go. All right. Exactly. Um, I'm going to do the reports and then have uh, the resolution pulled up. 111 Washington Street, 8 Carlisle. You've heard a lot about it from people who spoke in the public session. You have heard from the council member's office. It's not a pretty site. We don't have um, a lot of great things to report about it. Um, they were, DOB did show up. They were fined. They were ordered to stop order and they were working the next morning at 530 in the morning, which is again outside of hours. So mm -hmm. we are working and the council members working with it. It would be a lot better if we had a district manager, but mm -hmm. we do what we can. Mm -hmm. um, the Fulton stall market had applied for a permit for a space that they were denied. They are looking at other locations at the moment and looking to potentially find different oversight and responsibility versus the division of EDC that they're with. They will hopefully come and give us an update in July. Hybrid versus in person. We had a nice conversation about it during executive committee. And one of the reasons is, for example, for this meeting, all the technology was set up by Mimi, Lucy, myself and a lovely college student that's upstairs um and what we realized is even to get through the month uh, oh onish is not available today so in order to get through the next month until we hear from the borough president's office as to what we have to do and what is required by law and how the rules under the emergency order are changing to what is required of community boards to do we did a resolution to hire a student to help us for technical support. This is not the interns that we have who come next month sometime in the middle of the month. This is somebody who's here running the meetings because you cannot expect Lucy and Onej to be here every single night running every single committee meeting. And 
the chairs have to run in person meetings. It's been a long time since anybody's been to an in person meeting, and some of the board members have never been to an in person meeting other than this one. You have to, the chairs and the co chairs have to run the in person portion of the meeting. So anything that happens on the virtual will have either Lucy Onesh or the college student. How would they work the workload out to make sure that we can, at least for the month of July, maintain a hybrid format? But we are no longer allowed to do 100% virtual. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Cheryl. 111. Is that luxury housing or is that affordable? <laughs> That's the building. Right. I thought it was supposed to be one hundred percent affordable. It's a guy out of North Carolina. Uh, we'll take a look at that. So that I'm, I'm not sure it's one hundred percent. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. But even more so, the problem is right. The developer, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and the building next door, and promises made, promises not delivered. Right. So they're not starting out as the best of neighbors. Well, the fines aren't very high. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The problem. Anybody, all right. Anybody have any questions on the resolution for hiring the student for technical support? Will you call and I'll say. I'll call the question. I'll second. All right. So if you are not here for the first vote, board members in the hallway. <laughs> Jason in the room, please. I swear to God, I don't want to be a kindergarten teacher. Uh, Daron, thank you. I know that I have some board members who are not here for the first vote. If you are not here for the first vote, you must acknowledge your name on the record for the first vote. So, since we've already taken roll call for attendance, I'm going to do this vote by affirmation. So, assuming everyone is a yes, do I hear any no's? Do I hear any abstentions? Do I hear any recusals? Do I hear anyone, Mr. Amoruso, who wasn't here for the roll call vote? Yes, Amoruso. <laughs> Does this college student have a name? No, not yet. Oh, no, okay. not yet. oh so he's a virtual <laughs> college student. Right? Yeah, I'm not going to get it. Hey, I'll head down. I thought that wasn't allowed. <laughs> okay, um, moving on. The executive committee is done. Let's roll into personnel. Elizabeth? Hi. Um, so the update on personnel is that we are currently interviewing for the district manager position. Um, we had our first set of interviews two Fridays ago, and we have the next topic that we will be coming tomorrow afternoon. Um, there's really no other update beyond that. It's a process, um, and I'm going through it now. Um, it's we you know, often we can not here, and we're very under. Staffing mm -hmm. office, so anybody and all can help me out, please, please, um, hopefully, we can, we can find a, you know, we can hire a district manager as soon as possible, provided that we find the right fit and the appropriate person. So, uh, we're also encouraging everybody who knows of a good candidate, who you knows a good candidate for this position, please encourage that candidate to apply, um, direct reach out to Tammy, Lisa, me, or Susan. Um, we are just looking for a good candidate. We'll take the position seriously, and we really have experience, um, you know, in city government, um, with various agencies, um, and and supervisor skills as well. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, and as I said, it's it's rolling, it's ongoing, and um, I'm sure we'll be updated about this next month. So, yeah, pretty simple. Thank you. Sure. Once you select a candidate, how long does it take? That person get on board and start. I actually, I don't know the answer to that. I'm on board. No. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know. 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 I don't yeah. yeah. Andrew Zelter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They've actually uh, sent some resumes over. Trust me, we've been, Andrew, we talked to our president's office. 
we talked to, I think Paul did a shout out for me when he was chatting with the parks department, if they knew anybody, if there's any, you know, buddy that we love in city government, you know, or anybody that we think might know somebody, we're not shy. I announced it on district service cabinet. If they knew somebody that they wanted to promote who works with them, I'm not being very shy about it. Any other questions? No, we're good. What about Lucian? <laughs> okay. Uh, next, uh, thank you very much, Elizabeth. And next round, I'll see you tomorrow at personnel again. Yes. Okay. Uh, next slide and next committee. I think that brings us to licensing. Oh, I'm thrilled. Anyway, <laughs> okay. a couple of things. First of all, in front of you, you have three out of eight resolutions you should correct we had a glitch i don't want to go into it but we had a real complication so that you do not have five resolutions i will tell you i will be straight up and say it was a a <laughs> password locked without any person here so so we have no stipulations to give you on the five all right you're going to kind of have to trust us the most uh, there were none of them of the fives that i'm not going to mention were problematic all right um what we worked on today and i want to shout out to lucy and my friend jeff ehrlich who's no longer on the board but who i called up to help me with this uh, um uh, resolution for um, a 206 West Street. And, I, and a shout out to Susan, who showed up at the community board office because I called her and said, holy smokes, we need you. So, so anyway, um, uh, I, what I'm going to try to propose, and I don't know whether Mark or whoever's here or Jeff, um, is that you give us the, a, a, a positive vote on the five that I have no stipulate uh, all the stipulations are in order we will write the resolution uh we will go over them and that I don't I feel and I think Tammy agrees with me the glitch wasn't the people who applied the glitch was our glitch and I don't want to have to have them come back in July for this and so you're going to have to trust me we we had some back and forth but they were really not controversial um, so could I get a vote on that? He needs to call the addresses out. So it's okay. very clear. Can I ask a question? On the Please. For the ones that you're asking us to vote uh, positively, positively for, did they get overwhelming, like in favors during your committee session? Yes. Okay. Mark would correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but well, they did. Uh, uh, <laughs> so yes, they did. And we made some real, uh, uh, um, so um, for a stipulation. So the ones that are um, uh, right know, back up, shall we go? I, I need you to call the addresses. So I'm going to. Okay. 361 Greenwich, um, 211 West Broadway, and uh, 110 Chambers. I think we're going to do it by area. And then we could go to uh, 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 um, Andrew. You can add you can add one or two North End Avenue for Battery Park City to that because that's no, number four. Okay. And that was an easy one as well. Okay. Is one reference to their existing establishment for each of these locations? Yes. There are some of, no. Uh, no, some were changes from liquor to wine and whatever. One is a takeover. But they, they have a history, Andrew. It's not as if we're flying in the air. Okay. So I'd like those to be voted on if we could. I have a question. So formerly the Patriot. Yes. That's been vacant. Yes. So it's a takeover, it's a new application. What hours are uh we gave them uh, uh we gave them two if I remember correctly, because I don't have anything in front of me. We gave them till 1 a.m. You heard the folk, the folk from 200 uh, on a Saturday and um, Friday and Saturday. And I don't know whether we gave them Thursday, but the others are all the hours till 11 and Sunday is till 10. No, keeping the pool table. Uh, you know, we didn't ask about the pool table. 
Gerald, I haven't been there, but sorry, I was getting this, but I. <laughs> But they, it didn't come up, and they they they, they want to make it a. a, a I have no, 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 not that one. Not that one. But they they uh, they wanted to have a, a decent restaurant. We didn't have any trouble with it. At the, at the former Patriots. At the former Patriots. Okay. So could I have a so that's four. That's good. that's four. So three sixty one Greenwich, which is. Uh, Two eleven West Broadway. Not mm -hmm. one ten Chambers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And one hundred two North End Avenue. Correct. All those four together. If if, if you are comfortable with it, we'll go by up. Uh, you are not following the question yet, so if you have a question, you better ask. Good. Uh, can you um, just tell me, Susan? Did you were you able to establish that these restaurants all don't have any violations in terms of old detritus of open restaurant, you know, stuff out of you the know, street? You know, Alice. To be truthful, I didn't think so, but I ha I, I I can't give you a straightforward answer. I don't think so. I know 102 North End Avenue wouldn't because it's in Goldman Alley. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not. It's not on the street. It's not on the street. And okay. none of the others did, and they weren't asking for sidewalk cafes, if I remember. They were not. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions before I call a question on four? Go ahead. Do we know just briefly what each business is, if it's existing? Uh, we do know on Battery Park City because it is existing, and it's an alteration and a relocation there of. Uh, they're renovating. So that one, yes. Um, the one, others are new. Right. Uh, 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 if I remember correctly from all my uh, uh, new application, new application, they're all new. Susan, do you want to add on 24 text list? That's what it is. It's in the same thing over, right? Well, I have. What what I ha what you have in front of you, why I didn't do that, thank you, is because I've got uh, North End has a resolution in it. If you all read your resolutions, it's there. And so does 24 PEC. So I guess we could put 24 PEC in there. And yep. then there is a whole discussion on 206. Okay. So we'll add 24 PEC in. Because what does this change on? And 102. I like that. What, what is the thing? No. It's a class chain from beer and wine to liquor. Oh, All right. <laughs> All right. So with those five, 24 Peck, 102 North End, 110 Chamber, 211 at West, and 361 Greenwich. Are there any other questions? Question on 211 um, West Broadway. That is the existing. Like it was like my mama and papery kind of that's what I thought it was an existing location or is that changing? I can't I couldn't hear very yet. For two eleven West Broadway, isn't that an existing restaurant? Is this the one on the corner? The was a Mexican restaurant that just yeah, came out? It's, it's, it's Mama with like the papery. Yeah, oh, that's down the, it's Greek. Down the block. It's going to be a new a uh, 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 Greek two eleven Broadway. I'm looking at my notes. Is it Remember, West Broadway. Broadway. West Broadway. West Broadway. West Broadway. Well, it says West Broadway on the on the fence. It, it, okay, it is West Broadway. Broadway. So, it, yeah, I have the same thing. Where is West, West Broadway? Yeah. 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 Restaurant yeah. With the I can't hear. Okay. All right. The question was for. Rosa Chang. So Rosa Chang is recognized. Rosa, ask your question. My question is, is the 211 West Broadway an existing restaurant, which I know as Maman, uh, combined with a papery, or is it a new restaurant? My understanding, it is a new restaurant. That is my understanding. It's going to be great. All right, that's, that's, you know, I'm sorry, everybody. I don't. I have a fucking thing. I don't have a thing. I'm such an old lady. I'm sorry. Is there a chance that it's the here? Morton, Joe. Is there a chance that is the place next door that's closed right now? Yeah. Yeah. Probably, like, probably is. 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 Prob
It's, it's not Momo. Was it's cello. cello. Yeah. It was cello. Yes. And it, before that was like a American uh, yeah. barber. Yeah. Barber. Yeah. Barber. Yeah. barber. Yeah. The large one. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Best Thank you. Are there any other questions from any other board members in the room? With that, with that, we're gonna call the question. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Awesome. So we're. Uh, you, if you're online, you've got to have your camera on to be counted for a vote. Please don't forget. Mr. Corman. <laughs> if not, Mr. Corman won't count for the vote and that's just fine. All right. So I'm going to assume everybody's at I are. Oh, there's Mr. Corman. Okay. All right. Um, are there any no's? Are there any recusals? Are there any abstentions? Seeing seeing none, having all cameras online, motion passes. Thank you, everybody. So I want to preface a couple of things. I want you all to know that for uh, for renewals, we are going to be getting to ask people to come in, certainly with their sidewalk cafes or, or road beds. We want really to get a handle on everything because it's just no longer automatic renewals and some people are causing trouble and there's noise and um, you know we write a stipulation we do x y and z and then nobody pays attention so we're going to be doing that from now on that may not start in july but it certainly will start in the fall um and i can't stress enough for everybody if there's a problem call 311 Get that number, call the community board so we have it on listed and we either during renewals or whatever comes forth, we have something in our hand that we can go with. And we can also write a letter if we have to to the SRA. Susan, so, which one are you doing next? Uh, guess which one? Oh, uh, 206 West, AKA 200 Chambers. Well, you want to go, you've heard most of it, you can go. Oh. I'm going to go step in the ladies' room and leave the gavel with Alice. Everything uh, nice then, Alice. All right. <laughs> I, I, I do want to thank the community for showing up and, uh, uh, and, and being present and asking us to listen. And, I, I, you know, I think that's very important. So the owner has not had a restaurant in New York City. What they have had is a restaurant in East Meadow which has all the things the community uh, residents were concerned about, open bar, blah, 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 service. You know, I don't understand half of it, but yes, they have all those things. So we tried to write a resolution that was tight. And if truth be told, I wrote today without any information in front of me because I don't have the steps or anything else. It's from memory and that's the truth for you all to know, trying to listen to what the community explained to us and what their concerns were, and also understanding that if I say, if we say no, the SLA can do whatever the hell they want, yeah. and trying to get everything tight for this group. So the only, I've gone through it. Um, I think the question is, the doorman was supposed to rep represent, and I would make a change, um, uh, uh, some kind of security uh, that they assured that they would have uh, for the bar. We changed the hours um, and the community, uh, uh, I was trying to remember the application. They agreed to a, a 10 p.m. on Sunday, 11 p.m. on uh, Wednesdays. And originally they had said 11 p.m. on Thursdays. And listening to the community, I would go back to 11 p.m. on Thursdays and give them one on Friday and Saturday because I think that's legit. It's, it's on West Street. I understand the, uh, the community, but the Palm had hours. Whatever they did, their stipulation and their regulations was with them. So that's my only change. And I, I want you to read it. They, uh, we're not gonna have cover charges. I mean, we had a number of things in there that the community asked, uh, we put in what they said was going to be music. Do I trust them? I don't know. Uh, I think uh, they want to try to open. Uh, we put out buyouts. They want to 
corporate buyouts. We gave them four for the year. They do. They said uh, Amex during Christmas. So we tried to be uh, responsive and yet be responsive to the community. So I'm willing to take any questions and any concerns. Yeah, they agree. Okay. Think so, what you said? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. On the 4th, whereas. Yeah. Mine doesn't have a date for a Sunday already. Yeah, we got <laughs> Yeah, Lucy and I did at the, what, where Sunday opening. Yeah. The application we did the following hours of operation. Sunday. Oh, uh, I think we said 10 a.m. because we didn't want. Um, That's good. Uh, 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 Mumbai. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Okay, I have another question. Thank you. Wednesday at six. When Monday through Wednesday at six a.m. What are you going to do? They're going to serve breakfast. Uh, no, they're not. Okay, they're going to serve breakfast. That's what they claimed they were going to do. They're not. Uh, the you don't. You know that uh, I don't think they're going to have liquor. I. I, I mean, I don't know. They can't, right, Mark? Well, there's. Just Legal, uh, lots of 8 a.m. 8 8 start, but what, what, what did we say what time they can start? The liquor? Yeah. No, they can't start at 6. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, well. We don't have fun on it, they can start at 8. Well, you want them to start at 10? We'll have to see if they agree to this, but I'm willing to put it in. Early lunch. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, so I think the change that we would make is we would give ask them that, that there's Thursday would there's 6 a.m. because they're serving and I'll put it in the resolution serving breakfast, right. but no liquor liquor right. uh, at 10 a.m. All right. The liquor is allowed by the law. That's it. That's I'm right. Have to no, put no. A number. But I'm going to put it. Okay. All right. Yes. Tell me your name. I have another question. Jared. Jared. Okay. I just have a question on the background, which I, I have to imagine came up. This is so close in a building that the residents live in. And the residents clearly oppose. It, it, this didn't just happen to them, right? It, just, it shouldn't just happen to the building. At a certain point, like at least had to be agreed to. How on earth did that, did that happen in light of such opposition? Well, there's a residential condo uh -huh. and there are commercial condos. Right. And never the twain shall meet in often buildings, meaning the residential condo has agreements with rules, as they've stated, about what kind of operations can happen in the commercial condos. But the commercial condo owner is totally different, does not care. And they have, as the resident said very clearly, there are uh, the resident of the non residential. Uh, folk are on that board, a uh, part of the condo board as well. It's a, you know, uh, if you ask me, I would say to you, if you buy a condo, make sure that you own the con the, the the commercial space. Yeah, uh, that's really the key. And whatever the bylaws are, it's a problem, and we can't get into that. No, no, that, sure, Barry. no, for sure. Okay, yeah, and so we tried. Hold on. Yeah, go I'm on. Finished. I'm sorry. No, I mean that was the gist of the question. I just wanted to see, you know, yeah. understand the sort of background behind yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess my other question is, and this is, you know, excuse, you know, excuse my sort of naivete. Right? Don't worry. <laughs> you know, I, I hear what you're saying about um, presenting something, you know, from the committee that is or from the board that is achievable, right? That's ultimately what you're saying. You're saying we present something that's achievable. Um, I mean, is it not possible to? To take a position against it, you can absolutely not vote for it. Okay, but wait, I want to say that yep. you can take a position against it. If it passes, it passes. If it's negative and you take a negative position, all right, and we voted down, mm -hmm. we would have to go up with the group to the SLA, all right, in person and explain to them. Why and I legitimately could only say that the, the the board voted down in support of the community and the SLA would say more ninety five percent of the time I'm sorry this is not acceptable we're going to do this this and this we're going to do this this and this and then we're going to give them a license. All right. 
Okay, and that's happened to us. All right, and we have plenty of places where we have no control. And we struggle with it and, you know, on renewals, we, we're trying to tighten it up. But remember, we're advisory. Sure. And so uh, I, we, we tried very hard, the committee, to be as responsive as we could. And I happen to have a great committee. I'm really very, you know, I'm very lucky. So this is what it is, unless you see something specific like we just did, right. which I would change in so the... Uh, um, we we have lots of other hands. Okay, up, let's go around. I've got Joe Lerner. I'm going to go in order. And nobody from the Hold community. Huh? All right. So just a reminder for the public. I apologize, but the public is not recognized during this portion of the meeting. Okay. I know. I know. I I see the faces. We, I, we, we, we recognize do. it. We have the letters. We are working through the deliberations of the board. Okay. I, I, Joe, so, so, so. and after Joe is going to be Andrew. How did the soundproofing come up? Well, the whole thing came up because the, the residents were concerned having their right. space in East Meadow that it was going to be a nightclub. And they told us, as it's in the resolution, they were only going to have a trio. That's why I put it in. Uh, and that it wouldn't be noisy and blah, blah, blah. And that the, they weren't going to change the acoustics. And then, uh, as, as in the resolution, they did say that they would try to work, whether it happens or not, with the community to check the sound. All right. But it came up because they wanted to do X, and we're not allowing them to right. do X. So, S. I'm assuming there's going to be a point because I know how the liquor authority works. And if they exceed law, noise limits, the only chance we have to go back is renewal time. Is that okay? Thank you. Well, not necessarily true, Joe. If, we can, yes, we can write letters. We can, uh, if, if they come, yeah. if they get ticketed by NYPD. Oh, okay. Or um, and it and it it, it proves you. to be a repeat offender. Their license can be pulled. Okay. I did not say okay. you, Morton. The, the next one was Andrew, and then Mimi, and, and then Deron has questions. And no. hold on, I guess. No, Deron. I said right. Andrew first, Mimi, and then you. Yeah. So, pretty very quickly, I think you answered the first question. But can we write something in this resolution saying, given the concerns that have been expressed, we'd like a review after a six-month period? Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Or not? Why not? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, with, with, in the whereas, where, what, no, 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 therefore be it resolved. Be, therefore be it resolved. Absolutely. My second question is, I want to clarify with the first, therefore be it resolved, the way I'm reading it, and I think I'm reading it correctly, <laughs> but it seems to suggest that we're, we're recommending that dancing will only be allowed in the establishment on the four occasions where there's a corporate buyout, which means they cannot have dancing any no. other occasion other than the Where is number five? Okay, so I, I did read it correctly. Right. <laughs> yeah. My last question is about our leading or our new is different, strongly opposed to reducing the hours on Fridays and Saturdays and other I, I I am. I'm not strongly opposed, Andrew, but I'm also know how the uh, SLA, they may not sign this, you know, the, the stipulation and the SLA will say, uh, they've got to have a business. The rest of the neighborhood is open till 2 a.m. The other places and we're limiting them to one. Um, uh, that, that was our thought. Uh, tell me again, uh, uh, the further be it resolved that you asked for a review for six months. Uh, right. I didn't write it out, but the concept of uh, given the extensive concerns expressed at committee meeting and board meeting, we'd like to request a six month review. The license. Of the license. Next was thank you, Andrew. Next was Mimi. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And then after Mimi is there on, I'm, I'm getting around the room. My time. What happens at the six month review? Ah. Sorry. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Raise my hand. Uh, I just have a couple things on the they're just typos. Oh, fine. Okay. Yeah. So on the fourth, whereas there's plan. Lucy and I did as best as we could. I want to be tell you. Then on the fifth one, not perfect. It oh, should be God. late night dining with an HT. HT. Thanks for doing. All right. Love the work, love the partnership. They're on your next. Yeah, I you know. What has to do with the, the setup of the building? It wasn't at the, the <laughs> meeting really. Um, Madam Chair, perhaps if you don't want the board to answer someone who you can recognize some of the really briefly. Yeah. Um, what is the um so I have been in the Palm Walker twice. So is the you know Bob, Bob did, did, did the apartments start right up here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Second, second, second floor there's an apartment. Yes. Yes. I just wanted to yes. 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 That much I know. So I'm gonna make Andrew right Mark has some. Mark, paper. hold on. Oh, don't worry, we'll get them. We'll get we'll get this. Okay. Mark Amaruso's next and then Oh, We're going to let Joel go and then Justine, Mark, and oh my God, how many? Mark, go. Uh, six whereas, just a little wordsmithing on this one. Okay. Uh, take out the community and started several residents appeared at the committee and rejected this default. Of okay. Actually, um, what I would do is I let, we're going to accept that and what we'll do is use the number from the recording because I added the numbers in the room okay. and the amount okay. online. Instead of several well, 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 yeah, number, that's these fine. number of residents. Yeah, yeah that's it's over two dozen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot. Was. Yep. That's important. Yep. <laughs> Agreed. Okay, after Mark, I said, Joel, I'm going to the people who don't talk an awful lot first. I'm just saying. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I wanted to clarify on the fourth, whereas when you said Thursday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 1 p.m., did you mean 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. or 6 a.m. to 1 a.m.? 1 a.m. Okay. It's a big difference. Uh, yeah. Yes. And it's 6 a.m. Uh, uh, third, uh, it's really um, Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday, yeah. Uh, Friday. Thursday, we're going to give them until 11 p.m. So Monday through Thursday, mm -hmm. and then Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Let's, you know, we'll uh, have to call and Got it. deal with this, and we'll see okay. what happens. Okay. Pat is online. We're going to have Pat unmute herself, and then I'm going to talk to the crew. Pat, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me now? Can you hear yeah. me? Oh, yeah. Okay. The yeah. other part that we never discussed is that normally if we have or if the residents had a problem with an establishment once they've been granted their liquor license, first of all, they should call 311, file complaints. And then secondly, we will have them come before the Quality of Life Committee and we will have the first precinct there and we can discuss what the issues are. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Anything else to add? That's it. Thanks. Okay. Just me. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <Good smell. laughs> so no, I'm, I'm happy that um, you put in there to have them come back in six months, but I don't understand why we can't just stop operations at 11 p.m. or midnight, the latest, because in the neighborhood, everything else is closed. That's not, not true. That's not true. And hold on, hold on, and I'll use the the ex the date goes in an exam, it closes at 9 30. Yeah. Right. Their liquor license is not till 9 30. The liquor license is till later than that. Well, what but they choose to close based on business. Right. So there's always two different aspects. A business is not going to operate and leave themselves open for three hours with nobody sitting in there. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. Right. They operate based on the needs of what happens. Right. Sure. Which, which, which is sense. why when, you, when we're looking at the hours, if they're not open till 11, because they don't have any service until 11, that's that. I mean, we can also, what we have done before is talk about kitchen clothes. Right. So, yeah, something that we can the stick. Which I don't have in front of me. I'm sorry. Yes, the kitchen closes an hour earlier. It all closes, closes an hour. Usually closes an hour earlier. We can but make sure that's simply. Justine's question. I, I want to be very clear. These, nobody is opening a restaurant bar to close at 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock on the week. They're not in areas. And this is an area. Well, 
Our bins are open, and I think that the and the liquor authority is going to not agree. I'm going to tell you, they want people to have businesses that are successful. That's really the bottom line. So it is a, it, it, and I hope this the, the condo suits. They you know they do whatever they do, but that's not our concern. Our concern is that that business, and we've got to at least try to make it accessible for the business and be responsive to community needs. You don't have to, you know, you may not agree, but that's what we're trying to do. Okay, no, I don't agree. I, I, All right. Uh, more? No, no, Cody. Oh, you, you're you're at uh, first, first, and then over here, and then over here. You've already spoken, then I go. Go ahead. If you please the chair, then. Please, my pleasure. Yeah, I'm struggling to understand the business model, the business concept here. It seems like this is intended to be some sort of high end supper club or something like that. I mean, they talk about they're going to have dancing, but the only live music they're going to have is harp, piano, and stand up bass. I don't know people, young people who go out to club. They're not having dancing. If you read, they're only having dancing during the four. Buyouts or whatever you want to call them when we allow them corporate events on the holiday. They're not having dancing. They want to, their places to play jazz. Where, where, where does it say that about the club? Read that resolution. But okay. you said, yeah, we'll yeah, say they told us. Stop. stop. But anyway, the other, the other Hold on. Morton, let me ask you a question here because Susan, it says the applicants say they would have dancing live music. I expect to have a high end restaurant and bar. Right. They stated it, but then look at what we put. And then the community rejected it. So just then, 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 and then we said you cannot have, we put in, you do not, are not, unless I missed my bed. No, the dancing is limited. Nope, you've got it, and the therefore right. it's all. Okay. I call on a second. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's not the way people dance today. They have DJs. And but recording. you know what? We don't care. If they say they're doing live music and people are going to dance to live music, who are you to tell somebody that they can't dance to a harp? We'll go dance. No, no, no. I'm saying that it doesn't seem to refer to they can't have a DJ in there. They can't have a, 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 a electronic music or anything but like you know, that. Uh, that's on the questionnaire. That's on the questionnaire, and I don't have the questionnaire. I, have front of me. I will tell you. Pardon me. I have to change that too. I uh um, it, it may have, but they can. Well, I, I just want to, and I'll say. It, the whole concept reminds me of those types of nightclubs that were used to be up uh, by Chelsea Piers, and you know the kinds of where in track with celebrity celebrity clientele, crowds come in. I think it's really something that would be something you would not want to have inflicted if you were living in that brother. Okay. Are you done with yeah. your feedback? Fantastic. Mitch? Um, Susan, if you could just refresh my memory on the six, whereas the group uh, in the meeting, we were concerned that there wouldn't be anything like East Meadow where there are bottomless brushes and alcohol promotions. Yeah. Didn't they say that, that that wouldn't be happening here? Yes. So then if we can add that in, because I don't see anything where it, we, I think we just got to put that in as another uh, stipulation. That was one of the stipulations that I think that we talked about, that they would not have to bother from crunching. Here it says, wait, let's, let me read it. The community rejected this proposal and expressed concerns regarding the current restaurant bar where there are bottomless brunches and alcohol right. promotions. So now the, the applicant stated they did not intend them to do Okay. He left so, it all right. So, we can put a whereas in here that says the applicant stated they would not post those types yeah, of events. Yeah, that's where we'll do it. There will be so, a result, not a awareness. Bottomless yeah. crunches and yeah, yeah, But it's a question. I do have alcohol from them from somewhere, but all right. Yeah. I could have to sign it where I know this one. Yeah. yeah. Not in the yeah, it's all right. just left out yeah. like my plan of station. Um, it's just. Um, okay. Okay. So. Cody, just one quick, quick, quick question. Um, they, they do not uh, in the seventh, whereas it says they did not intend to upgrade soundproofing. Yep. What, what, why? <laughs> <laughs> they Eight. said that the soundproofing uh, uh, that the, was acceptable and that they weren't going to, uh, uh, they were going to make better, they were going to. 
uh, upgrade something. Do you remember what they said? The, uh, so, uh, I think they said the type of speakers. The speakers, clar clarity on the speakers. Does it have to abide by the background noise rule that we put in? Uh, gladly. Yeah, that, that, that's the, from this one because they had asked. Uh, Mitch? The, the, the community people. Are you answering Cody's question? <laughs> Question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't want to invest in upgrading sound You know something? Um, uh, they, they did it. They, they spun. They, they, they BS over that. I can tell you that right now. They, they didn't give a good answer. But so whatever happens, if it could be heard by the neighbors, then it's not background music and they violated it. So if they have the best soundproofing in the world and they want to have the loudest DJ, but it doesn't bother them, that's okay. Right. If they don't want to do soundproofing and they play soft music, but it bothers them, then they violated the background noise stipulation that we have. So if we can maybe just accent that in 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 in, in we can put that right in after right. that. No problem. So that, that, yeah. Okay. Great. Now my turn, because I said I wanted to turn. I would like to do a friendly whereas in here, because we hear from the condom owners. And I would like to put in here, whereas uh, the proposed use is in is as reported by the residential board of the building is against the proposed 200 chambers body. Absolutely. What is I, I think it's I, I agree with you totally. I'd like to put that in this. That's why we're a committee and therefore I'd like to and I would like to put in here that CB1 has concerns whether or not the. The lease is legal under the information provided. Fine. Good. Great. Add it in. Vote for me. Alice is next. And then, Gerald, you had your hand up. I'm delighted you got that in the bottom. Rosa didn't get to talk. Oh, oh, sorry. Rosa goes first. Okay. Alice Rosa. Okay. So I'd also like to, um, yeah, have in the, if it's possible to confirm the number of, we had 8,000 square feet mentioned by one of the members. Yeah. We have those numbers in there as well. well they will be. So the, the, the yes. square footage, the number of bars, and the number of tables and the number of chairs. I know you will, but I just want to make sure that gets in. Absolutely. And then I, I'm so I was a little confused. I, I have to say I'm with Justine a lot. Why wouldn't you just say in deference to the people who are living above this uh, restaurant that you say midnight? Maybe like the St. Liquor Authority will say it has to be one, but you know, on behalf of this part of the community that feels pretty strongly, we should say midnight. Maybe I don't know why we have to say one. We used to always say midnight. Friday and Saturday. Well, I don't agree. Okay, I, I just was. Okay. I don't agree, and my committee didn't agree. Seems to be a sticky question. Okay, okay. fine to say two. Uh, 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 well, my committee. I'll start lower. No, well, that's yeah. your that's your style, not mine. Okay. Uh, and the other thing is, I would. I'm just curious why this I'm seven by whereas isn't uh, there for being resolved. Don't we want to state explicitly that they? Will in, they would do sound checks and all of these stipulations as it therefore be resolved? I was sort of just I was a little confused as to where that really belongs. I think it should be very specific as a stipulation that should appear in the therefore be resolved number seven. Um, just to saw it. Um, I think on the that was it. instead of yeah. adding the whereas that they would abide by the background, that they would be putting in. That they would yes, ask you make them put in Alice what they don't want no, to put no, in. No, 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 no. Those are the things that you're saying here that live music would consist of acoustic instruments only, and that they would make sure that the sound levels would not affect any tenants. That that seems like a therefore be a resolved. Could we put in just music would consist yeah, okay. of instead of just live music? Because a DJ is not live music. That's a great point. How about that all music? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we all right. Okay. All right. That's fine. And, um, Rosa. So, uh, 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 and not I, uh, I do uh, sympathize about the noise uh, related uh, to you know somebody uh, making uh, loud noise right under where your child would hopefully be unconscious, but most likely will uh, not change it, which is gonna ruin your life. So uh, <laughs> but I don't think that honestly there's a difference in terms of impact to you whether it's open till one AM or eleven PM. Neither one is a great option for your child to go to bed. So, but it's a business and they have the right to run as a business. So I think that something related to sound 
proofing is awesome, but if the tenant or the operator is not interested in doing providing that sound proofing, um, is that something that you could go to the owner of the retail condo to go and install for you? Um, so that's number one, and I don't know that that's necessarily something that can be addressed in this kind of resolution. But that's, 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 that's that you try to do. That's no? in between. That's not for us to do. That's in between right. the residential right. condo no, just, and the commercial yes. condo. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but then I'm also wondering: is there rather than tying it again to the hours, which you know. Um, we have, well, nobody will ever agree on. Is there a possibility to tie it to a decibel level as there's, there's laws on that? Unit. There's so, laws on that. We don't, oh, okay. yeah, there's so that exists. That exists. So the, then you would have to if it's called well, the like DP is not going to meter and take the decibel level, right? Three, exactly. one, one. Mm -hmm. one. All right, one. thank you, Mark. Thank you, Rosa. You good, Desi, and then. You've not said one word, so you're next. Thank you. So I, so much has been said, and so forgive me if this has already been covered, but is it possible, and I'm not saying that I'm in agreement or not, but I'm saying, is it possible that the hours of music not be tied to the hours of operation? Is it possible that the music can end, but they are still allowed to be open until we do, that with, we do that with outdoor. So, like, mm -hmm. we do require that windows be closed at a certain hour and things like that. But we've never been able to be successful with limiting music within an establishment for how they run their establishment. That's like it's sort of akin to saying you got to play jazz. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, I don't want to be, yeah, like, I mean, you know, let's, yeah. uh, and you got you got to think of it this way. Like, I know if you look like at some wrong. of the other alternatives in the neighborhood, like Mark Forgione, for example, mm -hmm. I'll use that one. They close much earlier, but their liquor license is uh, one o'clock Friday through Sunday. Because I'm thinking that would impart service a happy medium. Like, you can stay open until one, but you know the music has. I don't. To, I don't. But I, I, I don't know if that's really the SLA. Right. The yeah, SLA no, will not talk about their music. It's mm -hmm. it's not related. Music is not related to their liquor license. Violations of the noise laws. I, Mitch's point is the right point. Comes back around music, and that they blame what they're going to do. But again, if there's a problem. Desi, we're going to have to go after them. I mean, that's really our only recourse. But as Mitch always says, understand that it's background or live music. It cannot be heard outside. Yeah. It is to be contained inside. And it would be nice. Uh, there are some restaurants that I know that have live acoustic small jazz field to quartets where the restaurant stays open till 11, 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. and the, But the band, the, the music is just from 6 p.m. to 9 right. p.m. I think that's a great idea, but as Susan and Tammy says, I think it's it might be unenforceable as the restaurant decision. But in practice, that that makes perfect sense. Okay. Yep. Um, All righty. If you have anything to say for board members that has not been asked or said, please raise your hand at this point. Gerald. So on the second page, it says the applicant's business model appears to be that of a nightclub and not a high-end restaurant. Confused. I thought we were talking about a restaurant with music. Is that a typo or is that? Well, because of the bottom of the sponges. I, I, I would, I would, I would counsel to say uh, the community felt not, yes. not that the applicant's business model, it was feedback. Based. It should have said that the okay. community felt. Um, what was the discussion about this? There's the whereas prior to that is Warren Street exit doors for emergency only. Yeah, they were uh, people were we I stuck it in there because everybody was worried that they come in or out or if it was a nightclub or whatever. And that's how I put it there. I can put it somewhere else. The main, want, the main entrance it, it was on West Street. Yeah, it was trying to put in everything we could we I could think of that responded to that to the, the residents' concerns. So I stuck it in there. Remember. This is not my forte. Yeah. Why do you have to for it? Too briefly, was I, I would imagine parking was discussed as well. 
Well, we talked about, first of all, it's West Street, Street and uh, Chambers Street. Why did you say Chambers? There's a garage in that building. Yeah, yeah it's Western Chambers. Yeah. Okay. And, and then my, my question from earlier is just simply, what happens at the six month review and what, what is expected well, to be reviewed? Well, if we have, if my sense, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, if it isn't working and there are all these 311 complaints and we have all of these other things, we will have to go to the SLA and we will have to say we're not going to grant we're going to change all of this and you can't conduct business like this and we will go to the sla whether we'll so it's be on the community that, board to be able to, that's right. uh, to okay. whether we'll be successful gerald yeah. i don't know but it's our commitment to do this if right. they're and that's why we ask people if they're really and the community will come with us yeah. i mean and it won't not, be just us up by it's ourselves not six months from today it's six months after open oh, after open, open, right. Right. Uh, there, I mean, they have to open. So, so and not not to belabor the hour issue, but I just want to make sure that the community board is consistent with other businesses that have not operated in the neighborhood before. Because I've been through some of those, you know, yeah. I'm thinking Bar 135 and we Bar, are pretty Bar 77. Okay. I know, I know the committee is. Yeah. I, 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 I think nine out of ten times we're pretty consistent. You know, did we make a mistake once in a while? Yeah, I guess we did. But um, I, I think we really try, and we struggle with it, with where it's in a small building with no real acoustic accommodation, and it's five stories high versus this large building that had, this was built as a restaurant and supposedly is insulated and whatever, whether it is or it isn't. We'll see what happens. I yeah, I'm, I, I live very close to there, and, and I know that that corridor is. And the palm had certain things they did. And remember, there is a big gap. I just want to say this that we all seem to have forgotten that there is a big gap that what happened with the from the pandemic when everything was closed down, and we forgot. And then we are now confronted with all kinds of things, but we're also confronted with outside. And, you know, which is very different than inside and hopefully um, uh, it will be contained the the noise, I, you know. At least we know that they can't have yeah. that dining on West Street. That's right. So, <laughs> or chamber, like or, all the uh, good uh, ones. All right. Uh, no, more, more. Oh, it was held. The question was called. Sorry. Oh. I apologize. And it was seconded by me. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right. So we still have a lot of do we I'm taking the temperature of the room, whether you want it roll call or by affirmation. Okay, Mimi, take it away. All right, people. So yes is approval and no is not. Yes, it's approval with all of the stipulations that are in here. And there are a bunch of stipulations. I'm going backwards oh, because I just no, I love it. going. <laughs> okay, so everybody pay attention. It's for you, Eric. You oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Filter. All right. So that was pretty yes with the stipulation that we. That's Thank you. Yeah. You. Uh, yes. Townley. Me. Yeah. No. Yeah. You. Stay. Okay. Thanks. Thompson. Thompson. Yes. Thank you. Bear some. Yes, there. Yes. Thank you. Sheer. Sheer, no. Robinson. Robinson? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Portia Ford? Yes. Thank you. More? Pat? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Minsley? Oh. Uh, I can't vote yes on this. I vote no. Okay. Uh, Meltzer. Staines. Lion. Lion, yes. Thank you. Lynn. Lynn, yes. Thank you. Lindson. Yes. Lindsay, yes. Thank you. Lerner. Lerner, yes. Thank you. Canel. Canel, yes. Thank you. Kay. Kay, okay, yes. Thank you. Jim. Juno. Thank you. Grayson. I'm not happy, but yes. <laughs> Goldstein. Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Galloway. Galloway, yes. Thank you. Broman. Broman, yes. Thank you. Friedman. Friedman, yes. Thank you. Forsberg. Forsberg abstains. Abstains. Thank you. 
Flynn. Yes. Flores. Flores, yes. Lucia. Lucia, no. Thank you. Foreman. Oh, damn. For, Foreman, yes. yes. Thanks. Coleman. Oh. Yes. Arcudis. Captain. Captain, yes. Thank you. Jane. Jane, yes. Giselle. Giselle, yes. Thank you. Cameron. Cameron, yes. Brown Kennedy. Thank you. Blank. Vladi Cooksane. Thank you. Amarusa. No. Thank you. It passes. Motion passes. I want to thank everybody. I really do. I, I want to say thank you for all your thoughtfulness and all your questions on this. Each one of you. I don't, you know, I don't take it personally, but I really appreciate it. And I think we tried to do the best we could. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're not doing Saturday night. Yeah, you got to talk. Thank you. Well, let's see. Seven Hanover Square and Eleven Park Place. Those two are next. Yes, and there were no questions on those. They were okay. All the questions. Second. All right, we're going to run this by affirmation. Again, this is 7 Hanover Square and 11 Park Place. So, do I hear any no's? Hearing no opposition, do I hear any abstentions? Do I hear any recusals? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Moving on. Thank you, Susan, very, very much. And board amazing work tonight on that. It was a rough one. Thank you. Lennon Marks, Jason, take it away. We have slides for you. Uh, Lauren, do we have slides? Yeah. Slides, please, Lauren. <laughs> We'll see back there for Lauren's upstairs on her own. Yeah. Okay. 141 Wayne Street. Both of these were not controversial. And 141 Wayne Street, we saw the month before. It was a application to install some temporary, like, uh, I don't know, phantom glass, kind of phantom glass removed uh, from the building. So it's a legalization of some uh, storage fabric that was removed. They didn't know it was storage, original. And then the second was the building right at that. That's how it was originally, those square transom panels. And then the next slide. So that was all ripped out by the state. Those, and now they're proposing like a, a grid behind uh, in front of um, uh, some louvers painted in kind of contrast of colors so that it looks like uh you know these square transom things that were lost and also serve the purpose of giving fresh air and then so we end up being chilling uh exhaust for the new store um, okay so they came back they told us how they were gonna you know do a great design i think it was a, a good time and we wrote a positive uh, resolution. So the next one is a building on Governor's Island that is being uh, redeveloped for uh, an annex to the Harbor School. It's a building uh, across the road called Short, uh, Short Avenue, and uh, it's, it's kind of neo-Georgian building type that we all know exists on Governor's Island, and the proposal is to uh, do a full window replacement and a new entry to the building and a new uh, plant for heating and cooling on the side and the short side of the building. And um, we heard from some parents of the Harbor School who wanted to uh, see if SCA was uh, willing to uh, 
bring some money for uh, rehabilitation of this avenue, short avenue between the two buildings that will become a good um, schools kind of corridor between the two buildings. The existing uh, is really nothing special. It's blacktop and kind of certainly not original. And um, so we added something about that into the um, aware ads and then and also to the, the, the results. But otherwise, we, of course, want uh, an annex building for the Harvard School. So we wrote a positive resolution. Uh, there's any questions. Any question? Uh, oh, you have two questions. Hands raised. Mr. Thompson and then Mr. Connell. For the new entrance that you're they're proposing for this building, um, what does that entail? So does it mean that you're going to like rip part of this building up to make that new entrance, or is it a reconstruction of an existing entrance? No, it, well, uh, the, the applicant is proposing a new stair and a new entry on and not a, 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 on a new location. So you see that kind of, um, I don't know how to describe that type of steps, but just the steps with the iron railing and the uh, framing of some sort of stone at the entrance, that's all new and never was there. And how will that impact the inside? Uh, it'll give access uh, uh, to the inside of that building from the same side as the Harvard School, I guess. Is, is yeah. Acceptable? But would they then have to basically like redesign, like the layout would be different for the inside? Well, the layout is not under our purview of okay. the inside of the building. Sure. So, but. I, you know, I assume that this is. Uh, this move is in tune with whatever they plan for the layout of the interior of the building. Our job is to weigh in on just the exterior of the work. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot about That's fair. But my only concern is that if you start to change things, then you will continue to change things. Because if you're putting a front door where a front door didn't exist, that means that you're going to like change the inside, which then you're going to come back and say, well, let me change the exterior because I've changed so much on the inside. Well, they're changing the entire exterior and okay. we don't want to really judge our applications like that because uh, in this case, this is a pretty complete redevelopment of this property. So you're right. They very well may come back with some idea about how to exterior light the building that requires some public hearing and we'll have to weigh in on that. But I just, in all the years and applications I've seen, <clears throat> I don't see any like kind of tricks or worries about extensions that you you may think may have. I, don't, I can't guarantee what they're doing, but uh, it seems just in my point of view, pretty in tune with what's going on there. And you know, we we want to really uh, we want people to 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 redevelop that into something for the Harvard School. So we we might even make some exceptions here that we, uh, for that stair. Even if it's not exactly what we think may have been there or was never there. Yeah. ADA? Yeah, apparently it's ADA accessible. Like uh, with one of those kind of lifts or that with the articulating arm. There. Uh, yeah. Or like on the on like maybe the the far side around the corner of Fun. that, that Fun. Uh, yeah. Fun. Uh Sorry, Patrick. You know, okay. if, first of all, this, this is an incredibly important um, project and building. The that committee, community board, one work very hard to make this annex and this addition to Harvard School happen. So um, it, it's an important piece of that puzzle. Jason, my only question is technical one about the applicant: is it is the trust an applicant, or is it all SCA? The SCA? It's all SCA. The trust is not at all. The trust didn't even come to the meeting. Yeah, yeah. they didn't come, and but there was some, there were some parents there. Students. I mentioned the road. Uh, okay. Okay. Right. Well, Trisha's hands. Sorry, right. Jason. Let's go oh, back oh, to the. Oh, hold on. Oh wait, not not a question. I'm sorry. It has to do with the whereas. With the uh. With okay, the... and then Trisha goes after the. You know, she can go first. Trisha, hi. Hi. You're up. Go ahead. I just wanted to thank the committee for this resolution. Um, especially their focus on connecting the buildings. There's huge pushback on the SCA on this, and I don't know why, but I really appreciate the foresight you took and the time you took to to hear the um, 
the PTA at Harbor School at this meeting. I, my mother was ill and I couldn't be there, but I wanted to know you to know that I got the report and that I very much appreciate all the detail you put into this. So thank you. No problem. And Tricia, don't forget when, because no offense intended, you are late, you have to call your last name and when you vote. Yes, all right. I shall. Thank you. Gerald. Not about the Harbor School, actually, the other um, application. Oh, we're not there. Are we taking them both together? Yeah. Okay, go. Um, I thought we had discussed about the keystones. If we're having them replicate, not replicate, but um, bring back, uh, kind of do a nod to to the original, um, the original fabric. There were keystones in there. Go back to the. Uh, but that was only in the original in the designation photograph. Or? Yeah, that was in the original. Lauren, can you go back? Yeah, there you go. Yep. Just the, go to the it's it's a it's a very small detail, but I I do think for the the since we're doing a master plan for the project, not not Harbor School. So, uh, Stop. One more back. Lauren, first slide. Back, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, there you okay. go. Thank you. Now, where are we talking about? So the large square above the retail space sign. In the that center of that, square. the bigger square and the square. Right, right, and those were original, and that's that's kind of creating a, a keystone effect throughout the the whole facade. Uh, I don't know if it, I, I would suggest that we put that in as a part of the whereas. Me, like on the side, can I handle that in the whereas on the side? But that we're going to that we want this screen they're creating to give the effect of that. That you can have the big square in the field of yeah. I didn't capture communities. So you would like to put that in as an additional where at? Okay. okay, that's fine. Absolutely not a problem. Lost. Okay. Yeah. No problem. If you're willing to accept that, we will get that in. Do I have any other questions from anybody else in the room? Can we call the question? Second. Second. We're going to go all in favor. Please remember, Tricia, to unmute and vote. So we're going to say we're voting. And by affirmation, thank you. I need more coffee. Um, are there any of, opposed? Any no's? This is for both resolutions. Both resolutions. Are there any abstentions? Joyce, yes. Oh, thank you. Grace and abstains to both. Thank you. Are there any recusals? Perfect. Awesome. Motions passed. Thank you very much. Next committee. All right. Uh, two resolutions from land use this month. Um, everybody here may be to stay. Uh, the first is a citywide zoning text amendment that I should read for you guys uh, in the last couple of months. Um, the uh, mayor's city of yes initiative is over the next year and a half going to involve three uh, text amendments um, where we're going to change the zoning resolution uh, to try to um, achieve carbon neutrality and some economic opportunity and housing opportunities as part of the city of yes initiative. So the first of those applications is the carbon neutrality zoning text amendment. Um, which uh, the application is intended to remove impediments and to expand opportunities for decarbonization within all the zones of the districts across the city. Um, what the Department of City Planning is the applicant is proposing, there are 17 um, specific actions and areas uh, that they want to change the zoning resolution in the areas of energy, buildings, transportation and waste. They're all listed out in the resolution, so I'm not going to go through each of those. Um, the committee, uh, we got our first uh, uh, crack at DCP in May, had a number of questions. To their great credit, the DCP came back to our June meeting, which was a joint meeting uh, with the Environmental Protection Committee. Uh, and um, right before the, the meeting, had written answers to all of the questions, um, and were, were very helpful, I think, in, in trying to solve those issues. So, um, by the end of the meeting, I, we uh, approved with conditions um, the zoning text amendment, which the conditions are um, that the, the amendments do not create unintended loopholes like mechanical voids, um, that the text amendment uh, be looked at and, if needed, uh, uh, revised to address concerns about the importance of utilizing green roofs in reducing energy consumption and emissions where they're otherwise allowing for 100% solar coverage on any particular rooftop. Um, 
We also had concerns uh, about Con Ed's natural monopoly and asked that um, the city uh, enact alongside this zoning tax amendment either consumer bill of rights or other consumer protection laws to make sure that uh, Con Ed doesn't unduly flex its muscles with its natural monopoly. If we're, in other words, if we're all going to electric, we want to make sure we're not getting you know, our electric bill. It seems to make a lot of sense. Um, the last condition of our approval is that the city uh, needs to, that the text I mean, that needs to ensure that all city agencies apply efforts to decarbonize and expand green infrastructure, um, including one example of the DOT's uh, franchise agreement for bus shelters and kiosks and automated public toilets. So um, it's a it's an important amendment. It's the first of three yeah. as I mentioned. The second one, Tammy actually mentioned earlier, uh, which would be the, the zoning to economic opportunity. Um, but uh, yes, any questions? Yep. Yeah. In the uh, in the transportation in the uh, in the parking flex, it says that electric allowing electrified commercial vehicles Use parking spaces in commercial and manufacturing areas. Aren't they already allowed to do that? Sorry, where, where are we here? Uh, this is uh, number 11. Yeah, parking flex. Segmental streamlined transporting car rental. What? They're not. Okay. Oh. Right. No, uh, they're not currently. Um, it, it would make a change in, in, in that use. Okay. Robert? I have a question regarding the. Um, Last point um, where the DOT will um, see, apply efforts to see customization dot 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 for yeah. street furniture, Spanish five with your nest of brush up with new chaos and automated public mm -hmm. toilets. Um, I'm a little bit of a toilet geek, so I'm just going to just for that. Um, because what the. <laughs> That's on YouTube forever. Oh my God. Um, so, so, the public toilet that DOT has an agreement with, which is JC DeKalb, basically has one unit which fits within a very large envelope and then requires an enormous envelope beyond that for servicing and or permitting. And the only one that I was able to locate close to us is frankly in uh, Madison Square Park. And when I went to go see it, it does a incredibly smelly, broken down mess that you could not even utilize. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the only one that DOT is willing to use on any of the sites. I know this because we were trying to put one on our site. Now, if you look at something like Governor's Island, where they have these awesome trailers that they have hard plumb in the exact same trailer size, and you have one of these enormous things that only, by the way, it has one toilet in it from JC to Cal. You can have seven fixtures. So efficiency is huge. And mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that's like awesome in like farm country somewhere, but one toilet that then takes 15 minutes to clean out and all yada yada and all the space it requires around it does not make any sense. Can we have something in there about the efficiency mm -hmm. of allowing for multiple fixtures? And maybe try to get them out of this agreement, which the, the, requires us to spend. The text amendment and our resolution have nothing to do with the toilet. We decided that as an example, one example mm -hmm. of things we know we've been working on. But we want yeah. to make sure that the changes in this text amendment don't have unintended consequences, like messing with other agencies' ability to do things that they might want to do, right. explore them however they wish, whatever capacity toilets they want to do. Just make sure that this zoning text amendment doesn't accidentally restrict them to doing that. Could, could we encourage them with this or, um, to basically? I just don't think it's within the scope of it. Yeah, the city has already signed an agreement with the NACO for a franchise, you know, about for the district for more than 25 years, and they got an extension of five years. So as a result, they're adding 20 toilets and they're adding 335 stuff shelters. And the thought here is that when they make these additions, that they're yeah. conscientiously using carbon neutral sustainable materials and they are not yet as of yet and so that was sort of something we thought we should be adding here just as a kind of effort towards the right thing with this with this existing franchise which unfortunately we got wind of quite late and didn't get to opine as a community board fully though other many groups did on this particular mm -hmm. franchise which stand yeah, through yeah another specific <laughs> and the appropriate committee would certainly take that up i think Standing yep. on issue, mm -hmm. that's a big difference. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. other questions. Yep. 
Yeah. yeah. In um, section D, waste and organics, it said that it would approve regulations for composting and recycling. Mm -hmm. It's small scale composting to the, left, to the list of accessory uses. Now, is that just collecting where they would actually allow comp the actual process of composting and recycling within commercial district? Or to just allow them to collect it and then have something, you know, some bark fall or fall it away. Mm. My only concern is the other new says. Okay, so, no, it's fine. It's, it's my, my only concern is they, they might be too optimistic and might be too permissive to allow carbon neutral things that, that there are unintended consequences, especially with composting their liquids and other uh Things that might not go exactly as planned, you know, in, in during the process. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know anything more about it. Okay. Wendy, you're next. So I was going to say, I don't know, like, after exactly, but I do know that there is an effort, especially uh, to do urban farming on top of rooftops, mm -hmm. and they would want to process their compost on the rooftop and then reuse it on their urban farm. And there are examples in Brooklyn of urban farms that do this. So I'm not saying that that is the exact right answer, but I'm guessing that that is part of the broadening of the regulation, but I, I can't be really accountable for the facts. Okay. And, and keep in mind, the zone effects amendment isn't a mandate that buildings have to do certain things. It's really just a tool again for buildings who want to come into compliance with other local laws by having these opportunities to put us a free group for, I guess, put in a wipe out where the complication is. Okay. Any other questions? Yep. Is this. Is it my understanding that this is purely for electrification at this point for the city? In other words, we're getting off gas. I, I understand we're getting off fossil fuels altogether, but also gas is that is that knocking it out of the whole thing? I don't know. I mean, it's decarbonization, so I would. And, and my my I, I, I mean, I did bring this up again in the sense that I, the unintended consequences is, is that um, if there's new new. Actually, it's not even new, but if there's other, if there are other technologies out there that can serve, that can serve double purposes, such as composting on site, um, which is going to be used for rooftop, uh, the, the liquid compost and all the rest of it be used for, for, um, but also with methane gas. I mean, it's quite possible that composting, it's being done in, in other countries, that, that composting could provide gas within the, the structures. Um, so I just yes. want to make sure that it's not, not there yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just want to make sure it's not like precluding innovation as we go forward. No, I, I think it, it, the way it's the way I've read the, the changes, it, it, it's not meant to preclude that type of thing. It, it, it's not going to mandate that you use only electric devices. So if something comes along yeah. in 20, 30, 40 years, that different kind of technology, you'll still be able to use it as long as it's not causing it. Okay. Any other questions? Or can I call the question? Oh, what? Second. Second. Awesome. <laughs> Love that. All right. Um, assuming by affirmation, are there any oppositions? Marusso, no. And Marusso, no. Are there any? Oh, here. Uh, no. You votes no. You votes no. Thank you. Are there any more oppositions? Are there any abstentions? Opposite abstains. Opposite abstains. Online, does everybody, Trisha, you got to have your camera on to vote? Uh, I think you might be discussing one over there. Oh, there you go. All right. Are there any recusals? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Um, lastly, just a, a non controversial uh, section 195 notice of acquisition of office phase. The city independent budget office wants to move the secretary from William Street to Lee Pine Street, uh, taking up a part of one floor. Um, they have, they have no fleet parking, placard parking. Currently, they won't have any fleet parking or placard parking where they're going. <laughs> Yeah, they're moving within the neighborhood. It's small, it's not controversial. Everybody in favor. Any questions? Call the question. Second. Fantastic. Uh, so, assuming by affirmation, are there any opposed? Mm -hmm. 
Everybody online, cameras on. Thank you. Are there any abstentions? Any recusals? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Patrick. Um, and that was, I, I have to say thank you, Patrick, but thank you to Alice also. It definitely was a joint thing and it went really well. So thank you both of you for all the detailed work that you did. All right, moving on, quality of life. Pat, we're all for reports. Okay, so I'll try to make it fast. The um, Holiday Inn Hotel that was located on the corner of Greenwich and Rector is now a migrant shelter. It houses about 800 to 900 people. They are adult women, single women, and adult families. There are no children there. Their lease expires in May of 2024. They have the right to negotiate for a new lease if the hotel is willing to give it to them. The migrants, when they arrive, are given all kinds of health care, and uh, many of them have sustained injuries on their long journey to get here. Many of them are waiting for other family members to either join them on a similar joining journey, or they're waiting to contact family members that may now live in the state. Um, they are given um, English courses if they want to take them. They're given three meals a day with snacks, just health care. We're going to meet with uh, Laura Atlas, who was the presenter. By the way, these shelters are run by um, New York City Health and Hospitals. We're going to arrange a meeting with Laura Atlas do the presentation because several of our residents who live in close proximity to the hotel have some issues like smoking that's going into their windows and loud noise. And before this meeting, we actually had um, a talk with the first precinct that some of the local businesses were complaining that some of the residents who live at the hotel were chaining their bikes to their poles or their businesses. And so we wanted to see if we could get a bike rack located there. So after we have that meeting with Laura and wh whoever else comes to the meeting with her, wow. um, we will report back to you about that. Then, as you know, every other month, we have our local infrastructure projects report from DDC. <laughs> Most of them are on uh, are being completed on time. And the one project that we always have a big issue with is the Borough Base Jail. Laura, um, is it Mikar? Mikar. Meacher came and she talked about the jail, the dismantling of the jail, the South Tower demo, foil is being asked for. Uh, another issue that came up is that residents are asking to have HEPA filters, or HEPA machines actually, in their apartments. And so we've asked Laura to go back and see if she can make that happen. And um, other than that, the project is proceeding. The Sally Port will be finished this summer. There'll be cranes arriving to dismantle the North Tower. We will keep you updated. They will be back in September. In the meantime, we may reach out to Laura just to see about those HEPA filters before uh, September. And as you heard in the public session, or from the local elected officials, many of them are involved in this. And so they are having meetings also with the residents uh, the other thing. Sorry, I don't see my agenda. Hold on a second. What was my other thing? Uh, that might have been it. We That's also have an, a new project. The new project that DDC is talking about, which is on South Street, and they want to work at night. And so Tammy and I are going to have a meeting with them tomorrow, Thursday because we want to find out exactly how this project mm -hmm. they intend to work at night and not disturb the le residents who live in close proximity. Any questions? Yeah, I, I have a question about the uh, asylum seekers. So yeah. is, is it at capacity now or are new people still arriving? As people depart, they can I'm sorry, what was that, Tammy? I said, as people leave, they fill it back up. It's that's like a, say, new people arrive. The contract is through 2024 at this point, but it is with options to renew. So, so the asylum seekers, they get, uh, how long do they stay and then they go someplace else? It, depend, it, it depends. It is the, it depends for on their individual status. Oh. There is, they went, I encourage you to listen to the quality of life meeting. 
um, because she was great. She went through the whole immigration issues um, and the status of asylum seekers or non asylum seekers and the process of how it works. It's not uh, quite as simple uh, as it seems. Relatives that live here in the States, others are waiting for relatives to join them. Others are waiting to be able to get into their own apartments. So it really depends. And as you know, we have we're all, we're on YouTube, and it was a long and complicated meeting with many issues with GDC. So as Tammy said, if you can listen to the YouTube video. Any other questions? Oh, uh, Pat, Vicky Cameron. I'm sorry. Could you just clarify? I apologize for not being more informed. Form. Is this a construction site that wants to do work overnight? Oh, yes, the DDC, yes, it's a construction site. They said that it's a sewer system issue, and somehow they were trying to explain to us that they'd be working underground, but it really doesn't make sense, and there are people that live there. So, again, Absolutely. Thursday after we have our meeting with them, if you're interested, call me, and I'll tell you what resulted from the meeting. Is this a, a city project? It's CDC, so yes. Oh yeah, typically uh, they try. Yeah, they ask to do work at night or over the weekends with specific contractors. But I'd be very interested to know what you guys come up with. Thank you. But this is a project where they only want to work at night. I've never had a project where they only want to work at night. So yeah, we will go back. Let me know. I'd love to know. Thank you. Sure. We are on South Street. Um, you can't see the address on South Street. It was on the recording, but basically they wanted to work 9 p.m. to overnight. And we're gonna meet with that. We'll meet with them on Thursday. Residents on Tampa. Yeah, that's what we said. Sunday to Saturday, nine, yeah, was, nine at night to six in the morning. It was mostly under mostly underground work, but we just need to understand the nature of it to find out how disruptive it'll be. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Vicky. Everybody, thank you, Pat. I think you're all set. Um, and that puts us to Justine. Nice and short and sweet, just like Pat. Yep, nice and short and sweet. All right. So, um, with the Battery Park City Committee this week, this month, we had two topics for discussion. The first one was concerning the creation of a memorial garden or some sort of permanent acknowledgement of, of BPC residents who were lost on 9 11 2001 as well as those who have succumbed to 9-11 related illnesses in the year after. Um, the BPT committee of this board, or in this board, has lost Percy Cochran, Ruth Oman, Tom Goodkind, Anthony Nataro, Kathy Gupta, and most recently Bob Schneck. And that, add, add to that the husbands, the parents, the friends, and neighbors, and we have a, quite a long list of people. Um, we did not come to any conclusions as for a longer discussion. But the dialogue has begun, and we've asked the Battery Park City Authority to partner with us because as they're redoing um, the whole uh, greenway and, and you know the, the resiliency. resiliency. Thank you. I can't even speak English. Um, it would be a really good time to work something in, and um, just to state, as we uh, kind of been saturated in Battery Park City with memorials, we're not looking for something big or uh, presuming. We just want to have some recognition in our neighborhood for the people that we've lost. The other topic that we discussed. Um, I will know if there is something for the employees of Battery Park City Authority. Oh, there, no, there is something for the employees. Oh, hmm, there's okay. a plot. There's a plot. There's a plot. Well, we need something in the ground. Cool. Anyway, other topic discussed became was quite contentious was the death of rights mm -hmm. and its health effects on Battery. This was brought up in the meeting. Um, health effects on Battery Park City and Lower Manhattan residents, workers, and visitors as well as again raising the issue of carve outs for residents in congestion pricing zone and not giving a carve out to private parkers or other government officials. Um, as well as people who were there speaking out in favor of uh, congestion pricing and many speaking out against it altogether, um, as it's nothing more than a tax on people who already stretched too thin. Much frustration and anger was expressed to no avail because today the governor just was announcing how congestion pricing is going forward. It may start as early as the spring of 2024. Um, and topic really was a transportation committee yeah. topic, but it was brought into Battery Park City by residents of Battery Park City who were having a conniption of it. Um, and so the reason why I'm going to bring it up is because the takeaway from that portion of my meeting um, was that the general public does not understand how the community board works. 
and I don't know whether it's on us to mm -hmm. teach them or they need to be brought in somehow, but um, mm -hmm. they need to understand what we do, what we can do, what we can't do, and um, respect us. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Justine. I don't thank think you. you can force respect. People will be who they will be. Um, there is there was a lot of confusion about the NEPA process yeah. and how it worked. The environmental impact statement would have gone through either environmental or transpo. Both meetings were gone. Either way, we did get a legal ruling that we for the interpretation of how it worked. We could not have passed or held an emergency meeting to provide testimony to do a resolution because it would have been due and submitted by June 12th when full board is tonight. The requirement by law for the city is whatever the board does has to be ratified by the full board. So if we have an emergency meeting, which those who have been on this board through the pandemic knew in 2020 we did emergency meetings mm -hmm. because that was the only way we could meet and whatever actions that we took that resulted at that emergency meeting has to be ratified by a full board meeting mm -hmm. if it is not ratified you must undo the action mm -hmm. you cannot undo public testimony so you cannot undo once you've submitted public you can't just go back and say, excuse me, can I have that back? Because it's then already submitted and it's closed as part of record. So we did have a ruling by the borough president's general counsel on that. Um, the public wasn't happy with that decision, but it's not our decision to make. It's kind of, it's the business of the board and how as an agency we operate is by what happens in this room after all the work is done in the committee we ratify it here. Thank you. But yeah, it, it's an important thing to remember. And and with that, I'm going, I'm going to move to the next committee. Yeah. Betty, you yeah. are the last one tonight, and it's 913. And we have two resolutions. I'd like you to speak a little bit louder because you're a little bit soft. And when you're, Kind of far away, gentlemen. Would you do me a favor at the far end of the table and separate so Betty can come closer to the mic? There you go. Um, in resolution, that called the slides will pretty much walk me through them. So we can go to the next slide. First slide is uh, the terms. Resolution is at the Washington Market Street School. The renewal of a closed open street on Staple Street between Dwight J and Dwayne Street. Go to the next. The first thing I'm on, oh, this was a capital request to the government DOT to tell you that it is all year round because they're renewing. And it is going at Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So the next one, we have a closed stream for school. There are no bikes and no vehicles allowed. But if you look where it is, it's just one block long. You know what? The therefore be it resolved on the resolution is missing. Unless I'm missing something. Oh, no, nope, never mind. All right. Let's go to the next one. Got it. You can see the thing that it looks like. It's really is more like a alleyway. And so there is no parking, there is no really anything. Uh, the, the complaints will make more sense to you when you see them. There are no building entryways on the fifth street. However, uh, there's just one bill. Well, for the next one, you'll hear what the complaints are. What the concerns are. Next slide. Yeah, the stakeholder issue. Let's sum it up, please. Washington Market Street School was, was very, very agreeable. Uh, hard for me to see it that far away. Let me go to some bells. It's okay. I mean, you really kind of don't need to go down the whole row to understand. You can certainly see the slide. Okay. Oh, well, Jess, can you help with just reading? Who's speaking? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I got it for you. Stay, uh, businesses and residents on the block, many residents work at home, find voices of children playing to be distracting, especially if on a daily basis. No main entrances, but there is an accessible only entrance for at least one building. 
closed doors used by other buildings for deliveries, so moving items in and out like trash. Um, film industry works on the weekends, which further limits the residents' access to the street. The residents came out in bulk to basically say they were unhappy with it. Um, the Washington say that uh, Carrie Davis and his wonderful is on the committee. She yep. organized the people to come forward so we could hear all of those. Yep. They do film there a lot. Yeah, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I have a friendly amendment. Um, well, I can't be a friendly, but I have to vote on her. Yeah. No, Betty, I just wanted to know that the Washington Market School team who presented said that they would be willing to pull the permit. And that, I think, is really important to put in the therefore be it resolves that Washington Market. Uh, no, actually, they did not. What they said was they kind of modify it, which is why it's reflected in here. It was a little bit voted on. They, they, they knew that we would, they said since we opposed it, that they would look at some alternative options and pull it. Right. They, no, when they said they looked at options and the DOT agreed they were going to work on how they could modify because they didn't know how much play they had to make for changes without having to pull it and create a new application. That's not how I walked out of the meeting and understood it. That's what they said. I went back, I listened, believe me, I listened to this whole thing all over and over. I, I went back to the tapes. Then I would, if that's the case and, and, and you don't want to put that in, I would put strenuously oppose this because the outcry from the community is not strong enough in here. I would put, I, I would strongly oppose this because there was not one person from the local community that supported that ask. Well, they were brought out to do a public. The people who agreed with it weren't asked. But she, not, she herself said she didn't understand what she was asking for. She only needed it four times a, a year. Yeah. And, and, and because of that, we should strongly oppose it. And she should come back and, and, and apply for, for, for their SACO permit. Mm -hmm. Not open space. I'm sure SACO is still the correct way to go either. Well, so it's something different. What it says, look at that first. So this one was voted on. Therefore, be it resolved that the pending proceeding board one opposes Washington Market Schools' request for year round full closure school open street on Staple Street. But so this is what they we were asked for. However, Washington Market School is encouraged to work with neighbors, the New York City Department of Transportation, and the Street Activity Permit Office. If that's appropriate, develop a plan that better meets everyone's needs. The whole thing is, we welcome you to put together a program that meets everyone's needs, but know the this. And the school was okay with this? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, they were. They said one of their main objectives, is that whereas, is they want to keep a friendly relationship. And they started this in 2020, this application of renewal. But they have evolved over time, so they expect only as a set of resolution, a handful of times is really all they're expecting to use okay. throughout the whole year. Because people should be aware that this school has been around for about 30 or 40 years, and it's been a great institution. But that, was, that wasn't the issue, and they, we all supported well, But I think new. that this is something people should be aware of, that people have sent their kids to this school and people have had a good relationship with this school so the and it has, yeah. has served the community very well and i think they just want to have a and i and the person who ran the school Ronnie moskowitz served on this community board for years and years i'm just saying that i wasn't very involved at all i wasn't involved I'm just saying that I just encourage everyone to work together. And I we, think if we, we do, we, we should did. be able to work this thing through. Paul, we did. That's the whole point of the resolution is they came. They didn't know. Well, that's why I asked the question. Yeah. Are they willing to work together? But we need to oppose this so they will go to do the other work. That's, I, I just, yeah. and I, I would favor it then. Yeah. And I think we should work together in that spirit. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping somebody's going to call a question. I see two hands. Okay. Just, um, right, yeah, no, um, exactly. I was at the meeting, and I think that the way that this is summed up just 
was put it together okay. as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were working together. She came in, she under listened to us, listened to some options, and it was. A, I, I just want to have that background. But yeah, she both was way happening. I can tell you both both with each other prior to the meeting. Yeah. yeah. If I can say yeah. that, she was in a mix of sounds like it was him. I'm not coming up, not possibly. And who has a question? Okay, Andrew, you're up. I just want to clarify, I think I've heard the term renewal used a few times. So have they had this permit since 2020, I guess. To this extent? Yes, that's why it's a renewal. If I just kind of automatically kicked in as a renewal and pulled the school or didn't. And you talked about the it, liquor rights. It was because of COVID. COVID. Yeah, they, they did it because of COVID. COVID. They never used it that much, even though they had it. So they couldn't make it all been used yeah. last, last, last of the hour. And they're planning on doing Rose, it. Yeah. Rose is next. Remember, guys, if you're mumbling on the side, the camera turns towards you because they can hear yeah, it. I apologize. Thank you, Rosa. Question. Second. Oh, oh that's okay. Oh, okay. That's, 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 that's another thing, thing that really doesn't case. You know, when the people are still discussing certain things and you do the procedural thing just to shut everybody up. Mitch, I, I hate to say it, but, <laughs> but that is Robert's rules. That's the way that works. That's what I think. All right. It was, you can. Feel free to it's write to your congressman to change it. That's not All right. Uh, question was called, and I think was it seconded? Yeah, yeah. And it was seconded. Okay. So is it oh, the last resolution? Here? No, we have one after that. <laughs> That's why we're trying to cut down to get to the meteor one. All right. All right. Last one's a roll call one. This is by affirmation. All in favor. So, are there any oppositions? Are there any abstentions? I vote abstain. You oppose? Yeah, abstain. And you see your name. Abstains. Okay. Okay. Joyce abstains. Zelter abstains. Zelter abstains. Amoruso abstains. And you oppose, even though the school said that they were going to change it? Maybe I won't. Okay. As you wish. I'm not going to do the negative. It's negative, which they agree with. Yeah, they will have to. Well. Okay, sorry. And, uh, you can do it. Two votes. Yes. Yes. Okay. Last one. Now, this. I'm sorry, Betty. You are the last, and it was contentious. So <laughs> sit down and let's get going. Bollards. Yeah. Next slide, please. Yes, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 They own most of the block. DC 37 is on it, but otherwise they're bordered by Greenwich Street uh, and uh, West Street on the other side. They have um, Murray Street on one side and Barclay on the other. This is the plan of what it's going to look like. So you can see DC 37. It's hard to see it, but around the edges, you can see it yellow by the curb line. Those are the bollard line. You can see it surrounds most of the block. But what it does, it does not go around DC 37 at all. It goes around Bank of, if you see a Bank of New York Mellon, it's with the property, they own the property. They're not renters. Why and they, there's greenery there. It's just not the security. Why do they want it? Well, actually, one thing the federal government told them to pursue it because they're kind of tired of people blowing up major. But if you let me go through some of the things, I wish people had read the resolution more yeah. uh, because there are a lot of details. You have to realize the money that they manage, this is their international headquarters, is greater than the GDPs of four biggest economies in the world. So, so they are a high profile. It's not relevant. They are a high profile group, and that was well, part of why the government got involved with debt seeking security. Alice, you're gonna you're gonna get the first comment because I know I mean, they're just that goes and stuff. Yeah, keep going. You can vote any way you want. Yes, go to the next one. Positions of the committee discussion. Those that were right. pro, I'm not saying anybody was happy with their but the pros that supported approving 
The plan was protecting the pedestrians or forest protective structures be placed near the curb line, not within the property line. It's given the level of security uh, not be restricted. Uh, uh, given the level of security approved by the New York Police Department, the counterterrorism unit, and by the bank was urged uh, yeah. to use Bollard. What's the corner? Not quite on the terrorism. They don't tell you how to do things. They could tell you the amount and degree. But it would be the Bollard would have to be buried within the planters. So that level of security is needed because planters can move. Also, the Bollards were then visually less offensive and are typical in the area. So very use of the space and nothing that unique. So that was that song. The people who were con, and it was pretty much a, pretty much a, passed by one vote. So the con group was a very big group. Uh, they did not support the request, the plan. This was the area around the Bank of New York Mellon already contains too many blocks that surround it with bollards for security purposes. True, but they said it feels more like a jail than it does a neighborhood in the area. Uh, the January 2021 resolution of CB1 called for a security plan uh, that they had to use plantings in the plot within the property line versus anything in the right of way. Okay, next slide. I think that, yes, I think that's the end. Yeah, therefore, be it resolved. You can see it's fairly detailed. And Jess, if you can read it, I can't. Yeah, I think everybody should have read the therefore, be it resolved. Yeah. I don't think we need to read that back out. Do yeah. you? It's it's on the screen, so it's in the record. Everybody has a copy. We have hands and stop, guys. Let's see, everybody quiet. There are lots of hands up, so we're going to be nice and light with each other, and we're going to go one by one. Al, you don't want to go first? No. Okay. So I'm going to go Mark Amoruso, and then I'm going to go Cody, and then I'm going Jeff, Andrew, Mimi. So Nobody right. interrupts and answers back. Got it? Committee okay. vote was four, four, and one abstain, which means it was rejected. Plus two public. Public counts. So the, public counts. the public counts in committee meetings, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, I mean, I'm opposed to it. I mean, next thing they want to do is come down and want to close the street. Yeah. So, as you know, that's coming next. Yeah. It never ends. It never ends, guys. Yeah. Cody? I, I, excuse me. I reluctantly supported this. Um, but it does create sort of what the rendering showed, like a fort, begin wide melon. Um, I mean, just this sense of like, you know, don't tread on me. Don't come here. And working where I work. A lot of our students utilize this area. Yeah. It's a very busy area. And it just it just it's just for booting. Second of all, I feel like the owner should be on DOT. You know, because this Greenwich Street at Murray widens to like three lanes. Why not extend out the sidewalk, you know, and perhaps planters, you know, I I I don't get it. There's like placard parking, they park, you know, yeah. um yeah. as opposed to like and it could be a beautiful public space. And so, you know, I think that there's opportunity here, you know, to stress to be in YML and perhaps put the onus on DOT. You know, it's just, it's, I, was, I recognize the security issues though. Okay. At the same time, so. Thank you, Cody. Who did I say was next? Jeff, and then Andrew, and then Patrick, and then Mimi. And then anybody else's hands who I have not. Jeff. I actually had the same point as Mark. I, it's been a long time since I've looked at the bylaws, but my memory is that in terms of the passage or failure of a resolution in committee, public members do not count. And therefore, this resolution would have. Public failed. members count only at committee for quorum and votes, they don't count at the full board. I am reasonably certain the bylaws say that they do not count. Patrick? Passage oh, okay. of Patrick, our parliamentarian, will check that out and get back to you. Yeah, I don't have the candy here. But no, that's okay. He's our parliamentarian. He will check. And then a follow up question would be yes. while we're looking at it, assuming the resolution fails, yep. do we, are we able to 
I think we're not able to address it here, at least not on the current agenda. You mean it goes back to the committee? No, not, no. I, I don't know the bylaws. May answer Third question. All right. Gotcha on your bylaws. Andrew, stop, Mark. Andrew, you're next. So, it's really a statement back to you can value it as you will. Fred has designated Bank of New York as a SIPI, significant uh, mutual institution. They're one of seven, I believe. So, but they're in two verified air. My question is, could city have dollars further up on Greenwich? Are they yes. protected by dollars? Yes. Across the street oh. at the Goldman Sachs, so does Brookfield Place all the way around them. So it is one block south of them when you go to Port Authority. And it's a simple yes to your question. Got it. Thank Keep you. going. Anything else? No. All right. Uh, after Andrew was Patrick. Uh, yeah, well, let me first answer uh, Jeff's question. This is from Article 2, Section 2B uh, under public members in our bylaws, sub 3. Public members of committees, subcommittees, and task forces are counted towards the quorum of that, sub of that committee, subcommittee, or task force and may vote upon items before the committee, subcommittee, or task force, but may not vote at the full board meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. Point. You're correct. Uh, my, my comment why I raised my hand originally is a procedural issue too, and I think Mark was, is, is on to something he was right. The original vote of the, the committee on this resolution uh, failed. So when it failed, the chair of the committee offered a negative resolution. That too failed. The reason is because in the original vote, one of the members who was front of the committee who was present, her vote was not recorded. However, it was allowed to be interjected, even though the vote had been closed later on. I thought it was procedurally weird, and I'm not having to stand on ceremony about it here now, but it, it was an, an awkward positioning because it failed and the negative failed, and then it sort of flipped back to the other one without what would have been the proper way to do it. This is a good lesson for committee chairs and co-chairs when you have that kind of a situation. You have to get somebody to to move to amend or pick something back off off the table if you want to get it the right way. You can't just rule to so put in to plan a vote like what happened a little bit there. And in full disclosure, I was against this. So I'm saying that just as a parliamentary measure, not because I'm trying to push in my view. Okay. Anything else? Mimi, you're next. Um I'm fine with the ballers. Uh, I'm okay. fine with them. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I guess I was just curious why now after 20 years of planters it, it, the need does it do they feel there's a need to put dollars in yeah. and, uh, and the other thing I was just going to say which is a comment because I, I did look at, you know yes the place that we mentioned having but so does Bank of America Tower and Midtown like all the major banking institutions have it. It's sort of a picture of the landscape at this point. No, they don't have bollards. They have bankers. They have, well, not at this location. I'm saying at every major banking institution for 20 some odd years. This is an answer? Yes, please. Yes, counter terrorism told them the ranking level, which counted, which means they had to build bollards into it. That level of can't move. And the feds came, as you just heard from there, right. a huge, very, very elite level of target, which isn't really a good thing to be in. Not a list you want to be on. They were getting pressure from the federal government. Right. Okay. And the okay. Um, I, Alice had her hand, I promised her she could talk at some point. So if I recall the question on me, not yet. On I, no, I couldn't not. feel more strongly against this. I will, you know, say that, but I also just want to remind people that uh, 101 Barclay, <clears throat> excuse me, you might recall, and, and thank you Mike, for acknowledging the cinema resolution, we already lost close to 8,000 square feet of interior public space that we right. recognized for over 20 years as being a privately owned public space, that it's gone. Yeah. The same argument towards security and all this on the good at this location at 101 Barclay at, at 240 Greenwich. And the interior lobby of this was a privately owned public space that was taken back by the bank. And this was done through a tremendous amount of lobbying on the part of Free Frank, who was working with the bank, and they succeeded. Um, and so as a result, I just want to make sure people understand that this is a little bit more of the thing that I would argue. 
Thank you. Uh, you also had something about the wording. Oh, in the rest of just in case we should bring that up. There was something about the wording. Second page. What? Yeah. Um, not in the box. Oh, okay. right. Nearby. Right. I just wanted a clarification that meeting participants made it clear that they want station to continue to be located. City bank. City bike. Sorry. A city bike location to be located on the roadbed nearby. What does that mean? Not in the box. Means came up with the wording. Oh. Not in the box. Not the box, but in the road. Okay. So, East Susan Cole, you're next. So, what happens if we all oppose this? This is my question. What then happens? Does the does the federal government overrule us? I'm just so curious. The parliamentary states we vote this resolution down. Yeah. Because. There is an application from in front of us. I believe we would need to say if a motion is made to do a negative resolution because you're voting down a positive and then you'd have to do a negative. Correct. Right. Yes, correct. Motion? That's okay. and but but my question is further. Yeah. What is so we let's say we do that. We say we, we'd like you to go back to the drawing board and create something different. Okay. So we can. And, and, and the one update that did not come out at the committee, Betty's committee, but that came out in Pat's committee, is there is no way for their project to start yet. Their project will be delayed by, I believe, at least a year due to the street construction project that is immediately in front of them that is running behind. Okay, thank you. That's it. I'm against okay. it. Okay, Eric, can I change the, uh, the uh, ah. Eric's next. He was recognized yeah. and then found like. Yeah, in committee, I actually voted against this. Um, I, I think it's there. I voted no because they they're basically moving their perimeter out to the curb. It's mm -hmm. it's in a way of them marking their territory, um, but. How prominent this this financial institution is. Um, it's important to New York, and I think this might be some of those things that make them happy. And there might be some security reasons that they don't want something even take the chance of having it closer. So if the other banks have it too, then I just think that I'll, I'm going to change my vote. I think it's just something we have to accept for for the uh, financial district and for the importance of this institution. As you wish, Betty, do you have any comments on that? I, I walk by there all the time, and yes, I prefer to be protected than to know that the people over there are sitting down are protected because they're in the property line. I know. Without jerks walking down the streets, like we're just casual collision. Okay, Bob, and then Wendy. I may have, uh, my ADD may have kicked in. I'm trying to understand what we're talking about. <laughs> So I walk past there all the time. You're talking about in front of the Bank of America on the same block as Whole Foods. No, no, no. no. It's across from Park Hill. Across from Park Hill. One block from Whole Foods. Yes. 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 Even though it's Bank of America building, Chase Bank is right there. Yes. Correct. The ballots are where now? At the edge of the sidewalk. And they want to move them in? On the curb. No, they, no, they're moving everything out, out to the curb. There are no balance. Planters that are there. No balance. The planters are going away, and it'll be bollards yes. that do the entire ring around the whole around the building, which will go on Granite Street and tuck into the side streets a little bit. Oh, all the way around. All the way down to uh, uh, Black Street. So they're going to put ballards all around the building. Right. Okay. Lauren, can you put the diagram back that up for Bob to see? Sorry. I admitted that's okay. That I'm not working so, so I got it. Okay. So now, right. So that is uh, with Chase Bank. Okay. 
This is Chase Bank right here. Right here. Mm -hmm. uh, no. No, no, that's in the corner. Chase Bank's on the corner. Oh, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn yeah. See, yeah. across the street. Yeah. Chase Bank. Right. They're going to put stuff yeah. all the way around yeah. the no. corner. Yeah. It's time to absorb the diagram, and then I'm going to come back to you. Okay, thank okay. you. Wendy? Huh? Nope. Wendy was recognized next while Bob's absorbing the diagram. <laughs> so I, I have two somewhat related questions. So some of the bollards in other locations, like around the new Freedom Tower, are actually resiliency measures as well. Are these bollards in any way resiliency related? No. Okay. No, well, I, I just I just wanted to ask, and they said no. Okay, I just wanted to ask that question. And then the second piece of it is do bollards have to be devoid of green greenery I and mean, is there is it i'm just curious why those big planters which is what the city uses around one police plaza which are very large cement heavy planters are they not um i don't know like you know whatever they call Coded for, they're not as strong to to, or is it the location of the planters? Look at, or is it down, and that's the comment made by the engineer on that side. Okay, I'm sorry about that. The fourth, where is down one, two, three, four? Um, so so it's just in terms of the the current that they have aren't in the right place and they're not high enough. Is that, is that the idea? You know what? They didn't include landscape elements into it. There are design toolkits that could have used alternatives. They could have, you know, even with whatever security levels they have, it could have been built within a planter with other things. That's not the opportunities that they wanted. Okay. Is that the end? Okay. All right, hold on a sec. Thank you. Uh, Cody, you've already gone. Gerald hasn't gone and Desi hasn't gone. And Paul. Cheryl. Paul. I can't imagine that somebody doesn't make manufacture um, a a bollard surround planter of some sort, um, encapsulating two or three of these. At the same time, I also understand from a security standpoint, security design standpoint, uh, oftentimes visuals are very helpful to, to, to deter the potential of of somebody even even considering that so um i don't know if there's a way that we can put in here that, that you know we would really like to have planters up and down the street in addition to the bollards or but I, i'm just going to throw that stuff out there and thank you desi i'll get to you after Cody. Okay, so I, I share in your imperfection. I just not as imperfect as me, sister. Yeah. So I hear a lot of opposition, but are, is there a lot of opposition to this resolution or to the idea of the bollards? Because I, I, I just want to know. I think this resolution is the bollards. It okay. Yeah. I mean, but, but at the end of the day, the resolution is to approve to approve the bollards. bollards. Okay. Cody. Real quick, there are something um, called reinforced planters, okay. which are, I believe, as I understood it when I was doing my research and stuff. No, just <laughs> um, was the, there are bollards? You know that are embedded into mm -hmm. uh, into the ground and plant mm -hmm. life around them, mm -hmm. and there are also other options which are like boulders, <laughs> um, you know, um, artist walls, other things that you know could actually be a little more vibrant. So, uh, Paul, I said, and then back over here. He's getting to the crux of the yeah. issue that. We should say we respect the need for the bank to be properly secured because it is a sensitive site and the police and the security have determined that they need the additional security. And nowhere more than Lower Manhattan has reinforced its security. Look at the World Trade Center, look at Police Plaza. I mean, we don't love the security that surrounds all those sites. I can tell you Police Plaza, for example, 
the bike lanes. I mean, we can a lot of yeah. the the uh, security uh, that they put around them is not ideal. But I think what we can say is that we can examine alternatives that can be used, and maybe this can be a an opportunity to you know examine different alternatives that and solve a problem that is prevalent throughout lower Manhattan. And we can mention these other sites and including this one. And we would love to work with the parties that be to solve the problem bank at uh, Mellon and at other institutions. So we're not opposed to coming up with a solution and we'd like to come up with it quickly, but we'd love to do something that's a little more attractive and but also does the job. Thank you for the language. We would need to vote this down yeah. and a new resolution for that first. That's correct. You go next yeah. and then Alice and then Jeff. I mean, just, just and what I'm gonna say actually supports that point. You know, if you look at what City did, that's the you know, new they way. put in they have a lawn on the Granite Island side, they did an incredible amount of planting on the Westridge side. Um, you know, Goldman has this considerable amount of planting on the Westridge side. And even you know, B of A on 42nd Street has a publicly or privately owned public space mm -hmm. uh, that's planted. So there is that, yeah, it can exist. Okay. Well, it does exist. Uh, all right, stop. Alice, you have more. Two things, physical security barriers exist. Of course they exist and you see them in many cities. These are sometimes very attractive. They're planters, so they do not have to be stainless steel cylinders that are four feet apart, one. So you're absolutely right, two. We have written a resolution on the bollards specifically, which again, you have identified in your resolution and you state very clearly just exactly false point that in that resolution, I think this was in 2021, CB1 opposed the use of numerous bollards for the periphery of the site, nor you're on record, and urged the applicant to work with the relevant government agencies to quote design security measures that can be achieved through plantings and other <laughs> landscape elements to create a secure area within their property line. So we have a, 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 re a resolution that is already, so it sort of almost seems like this resolution contradicts an early resolution and doesn't really build on it. So I'm a little confused by that. And I remember well that conversation years ago when you were also viewing, alas, the interior robbing of that thing. So I just want to add, you know, make sure we're not um, countering Unless we don't want to call the question. Right. Well, no, yes, and, and, and I'm saying, but I I've heard a lot of, from almost everybody. Yeah. So we're going to call a question on this. I think okay. you should do Bollards and planters and why dinner to come to and why you want one and not the other. No, because the call's been made yeah. call and seconded. Tell me you so, already called them on me, though. Did I? You yes. Did. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, oh God, I'm sorry. Yeah. sorry. Yeah. Okay, Jeff, I apologize. And then I'll, I'll be a little bit contrarian here. And maybe it's because I live in Battery Park City and I don't even see the ballers that are across the street from me. I walk through them as I'm sure you do, Tammy. Yeah. Uh, all I hate them. them. Don't look, don't, don't talk to me about them. I love them. Not them. I, you know, if we could get away with out security, it'd be much better. But I actually detest the planters in front of 101 Barclay. They are big, ugly, brutalist looking structures that obstruct transportation. They are not attractive in the least. So to me, it's not just ballers versus planters. Planters are not inherently better. I don't know what they're proposing specifically for these ballers here. Security, silver ballers all the way around. I guess yeah. I'm fine with that. I prefer them to the ugly planners that are currently there. Ah. <laughs> I, can I now call the question? Please, God do. I did. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. Third, okay. Listen, no, there's been a lot of conversation. We're going to roll call this, right? If you say right. yes, then you are affirming the support for the revocable consent without change. What? That's basically the way that is. If you say no, then you're denying it. And then the like Mark said and others, we'll just roll from there to a second. So, Amoruso. No. Blank. Blank, no. Brown Kennedy. Oh. Brown Kennedy is 
Cameron. You got to turn your camera on. Vicki and Trisha, you got to turn your camera on to vote. Vicki, right. we'll come back to you. Cassell. Cassell. No. Chang. Can oh. to me? <laughs> uh, yes. Chapman. Chapman now. Turkudian. He's done. Uh, the early departure. Uh, Cole. No. Coleman. Yes. Corman. No. Uh, he might not be there. Okay, early departure. That's fine. Kucha. No. Flores. More of the same. Okay, Flynn. Yes. Forsberg. <laughs> Forsberg now. Friedman. Friedman no. For, uh, Foreman. Roman. Roman. Sorry. Right. God, I need my glasses. Galloway. Galloway. Yes. Thanks. Goldstein. Goldstein one. <laughs> Grayson. Grayson, no. Joyce. Joyce abstains. No. No, no. Werner? Werner, no. Lawson? Lynn? Lyon? Lyon, a little bit, yes. Walter? <laughs> no. Insley? <laughs> More? <laughs> Moore can't hear herself. More. More. I don't know what a good will do, but I, I say no. Okay. Uh, Portia Corey? Portia Corey, no. Uh, Robinson. Robinson, no. <laughs> Sheer. Sheer, no. some. Aaron? Yes. 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 Thompson. Thompson, now. Thompson. 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 Yes. Thank you. Thompson. Yes. Thompson. Thank you. You? You, yes. Thank you. Seltzer. Seltzer, yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so we're going to have to take a look. I'm going to abstain. Oh, right. You, I forgot. <laughs> uh, got all about you. And then you have Cameron up there. Uh, Cameron, did you vote? Cameron, no. Yes, please. Sorry about that. Wait, I'm accused here. Okay. I vote no. Vote and the answer is no. Yeah, Cameron votes no. Uh, Trisha Joyce and Megan McHugh, are your cameras on and have you voted? I haven't voted. This is Megan. I vote no. Thank you. Trisha Joyce, cameras on. Are you voting? I think she's early departure. Okay. Do we really have to finish this tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a, it's a Betty. It's already did a month extension on it. It's a so this is the last one. So, so how about so my, we, my suggestion? So that's yes. That's yeah. Good. Mark and I, so please make a motion. I make a motion that. Uh, we passed the resolution as written up until the that board be resolved, where we simply say that in community board one rejects the consent for Bank of New York, uh, Mellon and Tony Credit Chief, and ask them to come back with a new proposal and delete all those bullet points. And I, I liked and and Paul and and I like the Paul language as well. Language. I got an alternative. Add that in the second there for well. Okay. Yes. Consider yes. alternatives. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Right. We need so you can have the whole resolution that would accomplish the same goal. Yes. Right. Protecting. Yes. We just yes. thought. Exactly right. We the whole resolution we just said. And I second that motion with yeah. the yeah. combination of yes. the yeah. 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 I say you have it all. Okay. So with that, I know. I know. Okay, guys, listen. Pay attention. With that, because knowing that the first vote was 10, 21, and 6, which means 27 people turned it down, 6 out of 10 approved, with the new 
Language and consent. We're taking roll call again. And Mimi's going to go super fast so we can all go home. We couldn't hear it at home. Yeah, we need to know. Oh, we're voting on. We're voting on a new resolution yes. that de that de declines the current design and the current application and tell them we want them to come back with Paul. Repeat it. How nicely he said it. Yeah. <laughs> what with alternative designs that would accomplish the goal of protecting the bank. But it, to include uh, more, um, you know, things Aesthetic. that yeah. would be aesthetically yeah. more pleasing yeah. to the community, designed in consultation with the community and with the bank. Yeah. Could I add into that? Because I don't know why the committee didn't do it. The word community amenities. Maybe they'll put some benches in. Maybe they'll put a chess table in. Community amenities. Yes. Oh. You don't get me. You don't have. To. There you go. Roll call. Okay. And after this roll call, we are adjourning. So. Okay. I, I, I want. All the questions. Yes. Question and seconded. Uh, Amoruso. Yes. Blank. Oh. Brown Kennedy. <laughs> Quiet, everybody. Cameron. 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 Becky. Becky. Turn your stand on. Put your camera on. Camera's on. Okay. Cassell. Cassell. Now. Yes. Right. Jane. Go back. Jane. Yes. The red. Chapman. 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 Yes. Uh, Coleman. Coleman. No. Oops. Uh, Seven minutes, John. Good job. Gucci, yes. Thank you. Curtis. Not here either. Flores. Flores. Go and take care of these couple of dogs. Stains. Uh, Flynn. Stains. Forsberg. Forsberg, yes. Thank you. Friedman. Yeah. Thank you. Roman. Roman, yes. Galloway. Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein. Yes. Thank you. Grayson. Grayson, yes. Thank you. Wait. Two. You, yes. Trisha, please turn on. K. K, no. Canel. Canel, yes. Canel. Oh, my God. Fluency. Oh, no. Not the ones around the table. Not the ones. Lynn. Yes. Thank you. Lion. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank I'll you. Yeah. 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 Guys, keep it down so I can finish the vote. We're only at M. Otherwise, I can't adjourn it. You're all stuck here. Go. Mitch, calm down. Four. Pat, it you. Four, yes. Thank you. Okay. Portrait court. Um, uh, Robinson. Yeah. Robinson, yes. Yeah. Sheer. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Fiera. Fiera Sun. Hi. Yes. Thompson. Thompson, yes. Thank you. Soundly. Yes. Right. Yeah. You. Yes. Filter. Cameron. Cameron, can you vote? Vicky. Vicky. Vicky, vote. I don't know if she can hear you. 
Mm -hmm. No, it passes. Motion passes. Meeting adjourned. Please move chairs back. Thank you very much.